All right, here we go. Another episode of Golf Subpar with Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. The Mexican Open at Vedanta is in the books. And a young fella, PGA Tour rookie, gets the job done. Jake Knapp becoming the third rookie this year already on the PGA Tour to win, which matches the total all of last year. But it wasn't smooth sailing for the fella from California. No, it was not. In fact, BG, good to be with you. And yeah, like going into that final round, A, it's the perfect golf course setup for Jake Knapp. He hits huge bombs, uh, cruises at like 190 ball speed. Uh, great golf course setup for him. After that third round, you're going in the final round, like this thing could be a runaway. It could be a snooze fest quickly. Then it looked like he might not even be winning after seven holes. And then we had, I ended up getting some pretty good drama down the stretch from that, but um, it ain't winning on the PJ tour at any event, much less for the first time. But this is, you know, we talk about the changing of the schedule and the signature events and things like this is kind of what you hope to see in these non-signature events is like the new guys, the fresh guys, the rookies like a Jake Knapp who has potential to be really, really good in golf. But like, this is our kind of first look at Jake Knapp. And um, dude, that golf swing's fun to watch, dude. It is long, it's old school kind of, and it's got a shitload of speed in it. Yeah, I mean, I saw what he did on Saturday, making 11 birdies, cruising. Everybody was saying like, this could be the next big star in the game of golf. And then I sat down and watched it all on Sunday. And my God, did he have it at 10 and two, white knuckling, like just get this bitch to the house. It was. I don't uh, blame him. I felt so bad for him the way he started. I'm like, because he wasn't just hitting it a little bit offline. It was miles offline. I mean, we had duck hooks, we had slices, we had a scold iron shot on the first hole. I was like, this could be a disaster. But he righted the ship, won it with his short game on that back nine. You know, I, I'm very, very happy for the guy. I remember we had James Nitties on our Sirius XM show before, who covers the Corn Ferry Tour. Asked him like, who's a guy to watch coming off the Corn Ferry Tour? He said Jake Knapp. So. Props to you, Nitties, for nailing that one. It's a huge win. This is going to you know, change his life, change his schedule, all the signature events, the Masters, Maui, everything that comes with it is awesome. The good news was he didn't have the likes of a Scotty Scheffler, Max Homa, Jordan Spieth kind of player trying to um, chase him down. But, hey, a win's a win. Yeah, part of that's to what he did on Saturday, going out making 11 birdies, giving himself a big cushion. Like It is going to be hard to close it out for the first time for anybody, by the way, even these guys, you just mentioned the big name guys, like they got to start somewhere, you know, and you got to win some of the lower level events before you even get into the bigger events and have a chance to win those. But man, his talent level is high. That golf swing, he's got so much speed to me watching him in that final round. I was like, it looks like he's trying to swing in slow motion. Like he's trying to not hit it hard. Like he's, he's trying, trying to, to slow everything ball. down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you don't need to hit it hard. And then he was hitting it crooked. And I, at one point I was like, man, if I was this caddy, I should be like, dude, stop trying to guide this thing. You've been hitting it great all week. Keep sending it. But yeah, the way he hit it off the tee that final round, those are big fairways, by the way. This isn't like Huge. hitting two at Harbor Town or something like that. You see some of the highest fairway percentages of the season out there. But dude, I don't care. He got it done. Typically winning your first one ain't easy. It wasn't for him, but he closed the deal. And um, look out for him going forward. Like I said, this is kind of the cool thing about the non-signature events i think we're going to get a lot of stories like this throughout the year and his story is cool too like well documented former bouncer just a couple years ago needed some money did that for a long time it kind of gave him a new appreciation for playing golf for a living uh he was a, a bouncer at a place called the country club in Good Newport, spot. which is a lot of brawls. not a golf place a lot of brawls at the country club i did see someone tweet that he should wear all black like a security guard on sundays i think that'd be a good look yeah he could get a little spot maybe a yellow jacket when it rains get one of those event staff jackets out there that'd be a good sponsorship deal <laughs> but, shout out with what you said about the non-signature events, like I hate all the haters out there that tweet, oh, I don't even know who these guys are. Who, like, I mean, this field is so terrible. Well, you know what? For the most part, most of the guys coming off the Corn Ferry Tour, we don't know who they are. I mean, we do. We follow golf nonstop. But for the, for the rest of the world out there that just tunes into the PGA Tour, like the people in the signature events earn their way there. And that's why we know about them. These guys get to know these names because they could be the future stars of the game. They might not, but they damn sure could be. We didn't know who Patrick Reed was. And he, he came out of college, was Monday qualifying every week, did it like five or seven times in one season, ended up winning. No one knew who he was before that. I mean, you can go all the way back to like Dustin Johnson won at Turning Stone his rookie year, needed like a big week just to keep his cart at that point. And I'm pretty sure at the time people were like, oh, Dustin Johnson, like this isn't a good field. You know, some rookie won. Like you got to win these lower level ones too. Very few guys just come out and start winning majors or contending in majors or winning big time events. A, it takes, like I said, it takes time to get to earn your way into those events and B it takes some experience like being in the hunt a few times before you close one out. So like we're, it's just the, the nature of golf right now with how long the schedule is, you're not going to have the, you know, 20 of the top 25 in the field every single week. They can't play. 
all those times. So you're going to have weeks like this. And, and quite frankly, I think it's a good opportunity for these guys like a Jake Knapp to get in there and have a chance to win and not have to beat the Scotties and the Rory's and all those guys and the Colin Moore Cowers and JT's like get your feet wet, learn how to win against some of the, you know, the other guys that are still world-class players, but they're not that. And then it gives you some confidence and you work your way into it. But dude, he's fun to watch play the game. I'll tell he you is. that. And his upside is big. Um, if he gets that driver going anywhere, the way he hits it, like he can be a threat and he's played, played good golf at Torrey too. Look, not many people knew who saw Thagala was when he came yeah, out, like, finished his third at Phoenix open in front of a raucous crowd. Now that everybody loves him and he's a fan favorite every time he tees it up. Yeah. It takes time. Like you don't just come out unless you're one of these weird guys, you know, Ludwig Oberg, like he skews the scale. Colin Morikawa came out, started winning right away. Like there are those guys, but it's very, very few and far between. So it takes time to become a star. So I, I mean, dude, Quite frankly, I watched more of that golf tournament on Sunday than I did Riviera, like coming down the stretch. You know, after like Hideki had that thing won, I was like, mm -hmm. I thought yesterday's was was more fascinating. You know, I personally. thought you would always stay locked in since your boys broke. Well, I just, yeah, I just figured I'd just get the highlight reel. You know, what I mean? yeah, appreciate it. You probably shitting on Nance a little bit, doing something. Yeah, this thing's in the books. We were one viewer away from winning an Emmy. <laughs> what? You cost us. I know, dude. You got to earn me. <laughs> you got to earn me. But I'd say this, bud. Speaking of golf news, there's a name that a lot of people know about. A lot of people have been wondering about for a long time. Officially official. Now, Anthony Kim, back in the world of professional golf, going to be making his debut at Jeddah on Lip. I said Jedi earlier today. That well, name good job. that name messed me up a little bit. Jeddah. Jeddah. Down, AK back, though. Down in Saudi Arabia. Excited to see Anthony Kim back. Look, he's a guy. I've been begging for, I think, a year and a half for him to come on the show. Wanted him to be sitting in this chair right in between us and hoping that he was going to make his return on the PGA Tour. There was a lot of talks, him possibly Going back to one of them, either the PGA Tour or Liv, um, Liv got a hold of him. They got some deep pockets, and he'll be teeing it up. I've heard some rumors that he'll be playing as a wild card in a couple events. Then just recently before we came on here, I heard he'll be playing the final 12 as a wild card over at Liv. So either way, I'm very excited to see what Anthony Kim does. It's been 12 years since we've seen him play competitively. I've seen a lot of videos of the swing over the last month or two. Looks as good as always. But competitive golf is obviously much different than at home with your boys, slapping them around in money games. But look, Anthony Kim, he definitely helps move the needle. I, I said on our Sirius XM show, I love John Rom, huge John Rom fan. I think if this event was in America or anywhere where we could watch it live, it would crush John Rom's debut at Live because I think that many people are interested to see what Anthony Kim does. I don't, I said on the radio, I don't think there's a bigger needle mover in terms of immediate attention right now. Now, whether that, hangs on for months and months or years and years. I don't know. I think that a lot of that depends on how Anthony plays, but I don't think there's a bigger uh, needle mover for one week right away than Anthony Kim. And I can be damn sure the PJ tour did all they could to try to get him play on that past champions. I'm sure sponsors exemptions were lined up around the block. I think lives probably a safer landing spot. Financially speaking, he's got an insurance policy, you know, that'll probably go away. I think there's probably more guarantees that live. That's safe to say, but from Right now, from the time he's six to tee in the ground, I don't think there's another guy in golf that will garner more attention than Anthony Kim yeah. the first week. And listen, I get that the the backers of Liv are from Saudi Arabia, so they want them over there in their country. I'm just shocked at it for a guy that's as big a star as he is in the United States that they didn't have his debut be over here where he can garner tons of eye eyeballs, go up against the PGA Tour, and try to compete with them in the ratings. I'm a little surprised by that. Um, I'm surprised by a lot of things they do, but hey, this is a great get for Liv. It's a huge haul for them. Yes. We would have been saying the exact same thing if he'd said, announced that he was playing in the next PGA Tour event. We'd be like, wow, what a coup for the of PGA course. Tour. You know what I mean? So I, I think if I had a theory, like you mentioned, 12 years since he's played competitive golf. I personally have pretty low expectations for how he's going to play competitively, not just the first week, but for a while. It, you know, like we look at Will Zalatoris, took some time off, like, dude, we got to give him some runway. It's been 12 years. For Anthony Kim, I don't expect him to go light the world on fire. I think maybe part of not debuting in America is like, let's keep him over here for a little bit, let him work off a little bit of the rust, and then give him, I think he'll have two starts before they eventually come to Miami, which is the week before the Masters, and then that'll be like the first, boom, domestic appearance for Anthony Kim in tournament golf. But it's a big, it's a big haul for them. This guy, like, he's been Sasquatch, man. Like, there's sightings, and it blows up the internet and all that, and people want to know. I'm honestly more excited for, wish it was right here, on our show, but the first time he sits down and talks and just be like, dude, what have you been doing? Mm -hmm. Would love to hear that from Anthony. And I think all yeah. golf fans across Listen. the world probably want to hear Listen, if I can watch it, I'll be tuned in. There's no doubt. I'll be Without question. extremely excited to see what the game looks like, You know what his personality is like now. This is a guy that I was really close with. Um, 
you know, spent a lot of time in college, early on in our professional's career, hanging out, playing a lot of golf together. One of the most talented humans I've ever been around. I'm excited for him, man. It's going to be great. I don't expect it to be completely smooth sailing for him right out of the gate. I mean, 12 years is a long time, but I'll tell you what is smooth sailing, Slees. What's the Genesis. That? Oh, my God. If you're in the car market, bud, I got news for you. No matter where your next adventure takes you, the Genesis GV80 is up for it. Featuring a stunning design, a wide range of intuitive technology, and impeccable performance, the GV80 will ensure every drive will be an unforgettable one. The GV80 handles all types of terrain with standard all-wheel drive and available electronic limited slip differential. The GV80's navigation system with 14.5 HD screens seamlessly integrates smartphone connectivity and cloud technology for faster and more accurate routing. The gv 80 spacious cabin features customizable ambient lighting. Genesis, proud sponsor of the Genesis Invitational. Make the game your own, the Genesis GV80. Learn more at genesis.com. Go get yourself something nice, bud. Very nice. You know what I mean? A very nice read. Very. Oh, thank Proudy. you. Smooth snail. All right, let's get to our guest. Listen, I know we are a golf show. We have a diehard golf audience. Sometimes our non-golfer episodes don't do as well as we would like. If you don't listen to this one, you've lost your damn mind because this guy is a stud. He's one of the starting pitchers for the Arizona Diamondbacks, one of the best pitchers in the league. This was the first time I met him, and I think I just found a new best friend. I love this guy. This episode is one of my favorites we have ever done. Let's get to it. Here's Zach Gallon on Subpar. All right, folks, we have got a ball player with us here today, one of the best pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. First team MLB, fresh off a World Series appearance. We got an OWM Phoenix Open Pro Am appearance. The Milkman, Zach Gallon. What's going on, brother? How we doing, fellas? Good yeah. to have you, bro. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Sorry about your loss in the World Series. I'm a I'm a Texas guy. Oh, that's sorry, tough. man. I was a game. What what pitch did Rom throw out? Game four? Uh, uh three. three. Whatever he was, whatever game that was, I was there for that. How'd you think he did in that? You got to see the action up close. He was impaired with the jacket a little bit. Yeah, so but you had to wear the jacket. He was in the clubhouse before the game and he's like, Should I wear it? Should I not wear it? I was like, You gotta wear it. You, you gotta, gotta have wear to wear it for the Yeah. He was telling us like there's a lot of rules and stipulations about wearing that like how when you wear the jacket you have to dress. I'm like, you have to wear it. Like doesn't matter. Just get it in the air. Yeah. There are a ton of rules. He came in here right after he won, had it on had a pair of Jordans on and it was in our video and his agent's like, ah, you got to cut the bring feet. that up, cut the yeah. feet out. You can't wear it's, sneakers with it. No sneakers. He was like, I wear slacks, a tie, like a special tie. Like it was, it was cool to get around him and hear like, cause you just figure the, like, you have to, you have to call and let you him gotta know. You got to get it clear yeah. and ask him. I'm like, dude, I won the thing. I want to wear this everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like I would just figure it'd be like happy Gilmore where you're just like wearing it everywhere around town. You know Go to the mean? grocery store I mean, and wear dude, it. I, yeah. Dude, yeah. Like, why not? Go to the steam room and that thing. Yeah, so whole, I would just won the Masters. I wear like a robe at the house. It's like I'm just wearing yeah. it around, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wait, smoking jacket. You got the East Side Golf T-shirt on, so you're obviously a big golf fan. A scale of one to ten, how big a golf fan is Zach Gallon? Big. I mean, I guess it depends on how you classify your fandom. Probably a seven. Like I don't, I can't follow it so much, but like the big events, like it's on in the clubhouse, like you know, all the majors and stuff like that. We have them on in the clubhouse, and you know, trying to follow along as best I can. Yeah, big enough that you play the WM Pro Am. We were just talking about that experience a little bit. How was that? And you got a little bit of a shit draw with the weather, yeah. but it actually ended up being a pretty decent little Wednesday. It was a, it was a solid day, like we were saying before. Like I got like the last two I've had the COVID year, and then this one with the rain. So yeah, I mean it's a special event. It's cool, like just to be a part of it. Um, you know, it's it's a great event, but the rain was tough. But who'd, who'd shout get, out glory was yeah. Who'd you get paired with? I was with Brandon Wu. And then it's supposed to be JT Poston, who I played with last time, which is cool. He's a, I think he's a pretty big baseball fan. I think his brother, he said maybe he's like a baseball agent or something like that. So he's we a had a huge some, Tar Heel fan. Yeah. So we had some, we had some stuff in common last time. And then his caddy was awesome. So like, I was looking forward to playing. <laughs> oh, with dude, you would have loved him. Yeah. His caddy, Aaron Flynn, actually stays at my house during the WM Phoenix Open. That's crazy. The man's got some pipes. He can sing. He really? Is, he's a lot of fun. He's a special one. He's yeah. A special one. I was looking forward to it. So I was bummed that we got rained out, but. Yeah, the yeah. postman and the milkman. That would have been a nice little yeah, fucking duo right, right there. Yeah. But you got the shot at glory. I was stressed about shot at glory because I was like, dude, the weather's shit. None of the celebs are going to stick around and be like, hey, we might have this. We might not. They're going to get on planes and go home. And yeah. also, I was like, the fans, I don't know who's going to be there. Sure enough, you get to that thing. Twenty. There wasn't a seat empty in that thing. 20,000 strong. Packed. Like, I, I was shocked. Like, we were saying, like, I had buddies that were like, we're still at 16, just like partying. Let's, I'm like, all right, yeah. let's just go over and hang out. And then we find out. My caddy, Marty, was he was taking my bags up 
and I think he ran into Fuge and um, <laughs> Phelps, and he was like, they're still doing Shout of Glory. Like, tell Gallon if he wants to do it. Like, I'm like, all right. And he's like, it's going to be like a 145 shot. So he brought two clubs. And we were just like carrying him around at 16. Like, people were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I had to do the Shot of Glory <laughs> in like 30 minutes. So it was like, we kind of turned it into like a little bit of a joke. But yeah, it was, uh, it's, I mean, I, I, was, I was shocked that people were still there. All, hey, everybody yeah. those those wednesday tickets aren't cheap so if you have one you're gonna go yeah. out there you're gonna enjoy yourself but you went down to shot of glory so all the celebs go down hit a shot close to the pin wins something hole in one's a million bucks money to charity yeah money to charity take us through your shot how to, how'd it go what were the nerves like leading up to it yeah i i was i was pretty nervous like i don't get nervous when i pitch because it's something i'm like at I, all I, no i'm like used to doing it. like i get more like anxiety like i just want to get it to go like i let, let's just get it going like i'm i'm never really nervous never been that way it's just like all right like i've done my preparation let's just get this thing going like but the guy i was like all right there's people here it's a t it was like a bowling alley down there <laughs> it was like, so tight on that tee yeah claustrophobic and, and what like, kind of yardage 128 was, i think the pin was 144 if i remember correctly okay. and we didn't have my that was the one thing on marty i was like he's like i didn't bring i didn't bring the shooter and i was like all right we need to find somebody who has it so somebody shot i think it was adrian beltray's caddy and he was like i got it at 144 i'm like all right so it was downwind i'm like just gonna be a little bit of adrenaline so like I, all those things like fact i can't imagine like you know trying to factor in you know how many shots guys play in a major or in like a weekend event it's like 200 and some odd shots so it's like but yeah it was uh i think i i hit like 10 feet from the pin spun it back i wound up staying on the green so like i was i was pumped about that but i just didn't want to kill somebody i was like just get in the air just just don't skull on just don't shank it um so yeah i was i was relieved that it was on the green most importantly who was the worst cold cuts hit a pretty special yeah. and i only paid attention for a handful of guys because it's such a shit show up there but like cold cuts hit a a knife that never really went above belly button yeah. height. I think it would have gone 272 yards if it hadn't run into something <laughs> with a pitching wedge. Um, but there was no, like, were you there? La it was last year. Yeah. One of the, the Bachelor. Can't remember his name. Apologies to The Bachelor. He showed up, never plays golf, barefooted, overalls, split grip, grip, practice swing, takes Sounds a divot like a this big, ball teed up this high, and the cameramen get eight yards in front of him and barely off his line, and he damn near killed the dude and that like shut down the production yeah for a while there was none of that this year they they needed a the photographers needed a helmet there Ooh. somebody apparently after i hit drilled a photographer i don't remember I, I missed it i was doing an interview with one of the like the local tv stations or whatever and i came back my way was like did you see that i'm like what happened he's like somebody like right in the inner thigh God, like the nuts are yeah look out dangerous dude you gotta like, need some wear a cup gear. and yeah. you need like a helmet like, cup and a helmet it. to go to the shot of glory yeah I mean, dude, you, like, it must be whoever draws the shortest straw has got to be the cameraman <laughs> so, for that deal. Like, you, so you might die but yeah. we're also gonna get a couple usable shots i was talking speaking of cold cuts i was talking to to bob and he was like I, that was like i'd never had anything like that before i was like yeah it was a literal bowling alley out there it's like those dudes were freaking out before it was awesome actually yeah. talking to like dude this is because it was more a you have the twenty thousand, but b that t was so overcrowded and it was so congested yeah. like you could didn't have room to breathe it just had to be like for people that don't play golf like that's suffocating Wait, yeah it shocks me like i mean we go to every pga tour event those guys are the best in the world so they line close there we go to tahoe or this <laughs> event here i'm like you you people realize these people they're not good at golf <laughs> this is not what they do like you're just begging to get killed yeah. right now it, it's yeah uh, not not a good environment for like standing really yeah. close they there's stand brian this, urlacher with a three wood yeah. from the rough and they're like let me and they stand the same place yeah. they wait like, for rory mcelroy yeah it's <laughs> like what die. are you doing I, he's in here for I, a reason my girlfriend was standing her my girlfriend and her friends were standing right behind the camera guy on the left side and thankfully there weren't a lot of lefty golfers but like after the second one i was like Hey, you guys might want to just move down a little bit. Like, just give me a little space. I can't have you wear one on the forehead. Like, that <laughs> yeah, just like, won't I got it. I got to yeah. wrap. Yeah, I got to wrap. Like, so, can you just slide down just a little bit? So, yeah. yeah, we got to tighten that up just who a are, little bit. Who are some of your favorite golfers to follow? Oh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, what Wyndham's been doing has been awesome. I got to talk to him a little bit at the the Dream Day on Tuesday, and. Just kind of hearing his story, I think, is, is like a super cool thing. Um, you know, I, I can respect just grinding and then finally trying to break through and then like have your moment. And he's been on fire. Um, I don't know. Home is not. He's a Dodgers fan. So I'm kind of mm. like. I, I, Die hard. Mm. Yeah. So I was like, he was sitting behind the dugout actually, like one of the games earlier this year. 
And I kept looking. I'm like, why do I know this guy? Why do I know this guy? And then I come back and I was like, oh, I think that's homeless. So it's like, I was hoping I got to play with him in the Pro-Am so we could talk some shit about the Dodgers and, and whatnot. Um, Rory's always, you know, sick to watch just because it's Rory. So it's like, I mean, any any like anything that like guys that have like just pure swings like i just love watching i'm trying to soak it all in as best i can have okay. you gotten to be buds with any like there's so many of them around here and you're getting into the golf scene have you gotten to play with any of them or develop friendships with any of them no uh, none other than the guys i've gotten to play with in the pro-am um got to play with with poston um brian Harmon was really cool he I, the first time i played in the pro-am i played with him um yeah i mean all, all those guys are just like he threw out a great first i was gonna pitch. say sneaky. great first pitch Good what? representation for golfers. He threw out the first pitch. Where? At a Braves East game. I think, was it, was it during East Lake? Yes. Because he won the Open Championship, yeah. so they come back East Lake, Atlanta. Sick. And he threw one out, and it was nice. It was like quick, boom. Like yeah. left, left You could tell he'd throw him. Yeah, there. yeah, no. Nice. he's He helped me. It's funny. I, I guess I got, I'm like biased because I was, I had a fried egg, and that, the last time I played, and he was, I couldn't get it out. And he was like, all right, try this. And like close the club face. Super, mm-hmm. And I'm like, it was cool for him just to like to take, 30 seconds but hey man try this and like so i'm on the like i don't know fourth hole in the bunker and he's just like i got like a little chipping lesson from him so i was like i like following him um and then my buddies at home know like that's your guy huh that's your guy i'm like he's not <laughs> my cool. guy because it, he probably doesn't remember me at all but i'm like yeah i'm i'm, I'm partial to that because i got to play with him he best, remembers best friends with the open champ no yeah deal. yeah i mean sorry about you it. think it's a cool deal to play with them as golfers then i can guarantee you like all of them think it's a cooler deal like yo i'm actually i'm playing with totally. like a dude like y- yeah. you think you're like fish out of water like no dude they love that no i just try and stay out of their way i'm like listen like even when i even i played with brandon Wu this year and i'm like i don't want to go like because i don't know what those guys are trying to accomplish in the pro-am day like i know like when i'm if they had a baseball similar type of thing like i would be very intentional but like also understand like you know you try to interact with the people there so like i try to stay out of their way but all those guys are yeah they're awesome they just you know come up and like to shoot the shit and it's... speaking of Wyndham, you know he's made a gazillion dollars gazillion. last year and a half just left Wisbrock. he's up there playing 82 year old mike young and gin right and now gin, trying to get a little more cash by the way that's the shittiest investment you can make is playing mikey and gin he's the dumbest bazillionaire now of all time mike young will kill you he's gonna take all your u.s open money it's gonna be great. He's gonna need that champion story. He's gonna be the only dude to blow through, and he's not gonna buy a single fucking thing. Is the thing he's just gonna lose it and shitty game. What's playing with house money? Right? He's yeah, the worst gambler like, in the world. What'd you waste your money on, Mike Young at Whisperock? Yeah, Jen poker. He thinks he's nice at poker. He shows up to the caddy games and loses his ass. He's terrible. He loses to Ellis on their year long Jen little pool that they got. Yeah. We'll get you set up with it. if you like dumb. Yeah. As, as an easy easy setup. And his watching his stuff, like you play with some nice dudes at the, in those things, but like his is it's different he i didn't realize like on tv it's hard to tell not how good guys are but like i didn't realize how long he was so he oh, does that dude. like because he's not he's smaller than me so i'm like all right like the year before it was john rom and i'm like all right, i know john rom can like sling it out there and then Wyndham steps up and they have him hit balls the dream day and i'm like he's hammering balls here i'm like I mean, when he goes is, i mean he's top three or four yeah, yeah. if so he like, wanted to true. try to like lead it and be the long i think he could yeah I like be the, real fucking close. The freak athletes in that sense, like I, th- I think that's like super impressive. His like, is cool though because he's in perfect balance. Like he doesn't look fades. like he's falling over and he has one ninety ball speed. Yeah, I'm like which is just it disgusting. doesn't look like anything. And you watch it, and you're like that's it's just not coming down. Yeah, you're like it's just out there forever. It doesn't even look like he's going at it that hard. He was he was sailing balls over that tent downrange at at Champions. I was like, yeah, that range. Can't oh, that, that range can't. That's I was like, not this hold is him. crazy. Yeah. I'm like. Yeah, this guy, I, I didn't realize he was that long. It's like, Dude, when we go to Colonial, I caddied for him a couple years at Colonial. We go to Colonial, it's a, it's a notoriously like small driving yeah. range. He, he can't even hit three woods. He has to swing slow motion drivers and hit chips and stuff. He's like, dude, it's kind of weird going to the first tee. It's the only tournament I ever go to where I haven't hit like an actual driver. I never had that problem. No, I was like, dude, I just send it all day and then I send it again. <laughs> Sling it. It's yeah, whatever you want it went, over the, it went what, over the Trinity. What, what kind of handicap you carry? Uh, I think I'm at an 8.8 eight right now. All right. I was down to like a seven, but I I have no business at being a seven. I can't putt, so like I lose my wallet when we're on the road. Really? So like, yeah, okay, yeah. That's a great question uh, yeah. because that. all the pitchers, you know, they've been known traveling with their clubs and everything. Yes. You get some days off on yeah. road trips. Are you one that travels with the clubs, and how often you play? Almost every trip, my clubs are on there, unless it's like a three day trip to San Diego where it's like no off day or like I'm pitching or something like that where I'm like it doesn't make sense for me to bring them. Mm-hmm. But I would say ninety. 
to 95 percent of the trips i'm that's bringing sick up. i didn't know that was still a th- i didn't know if that was like yeah. still a thing or it had to be like smoltz glavin maddox no. level like era to it's, do that it's i would say it's probably dependent on the org but like our manager tory is the man he's like listen if you guys need to do whatever to get away from baseball like i understand the grind He's like, if you guys want to go play golf, like, just make sure you're ready to play. Like, I like him. Yeah. Dude, what a dude. So, oh, he's the man. That's a hell of a so recruiting you, pitch. Right, so yeah. Say, say you pitch or say you're you're pitching three days from now and you're on the road. Do you have to go to the stadium and, like, get some work in before you go play? Or is it just, hey, this is your day. Go do what you want. No, nah, it's usually in the mornings we'll play. So, okay. like, that's the only thing. Like, golf, you got it. It's like golf or sleep. So, you're figuring out yeah. which one's which. So, like, I've had some early wake-up calls um, to play some, like, sick places. But – you try and figure out like, all right, do I have a bullpen that day? Cause I gotta get there a little bit earlier to warm up and do all that stuff. But like, if it's a day, like if I just pitched and I'm not throwing and I just have to do some recovery, like you got a little bit more time to get to the field. But yeah, I mean, outside of days before I pitch and day before I pitch and the day of like, I'm, I'll try to play. That's, That's awesome. sick. What's yeah. the best city, your favorite city you go to for playing? Oh, um, Pittsburgh is a, is a yeah. good one. Sneaky Where do you go? One. We Oakland. played, we haven't played Oakmont yet. They've they've been closed. You want to feel year. real shitty about your game? Yeah, you want to play hate, Oakmont. That's what I heard. <laughs> It'll eat your. Ass. My buddy that played for the Pirates, that was a good golfer. He's but plays a big slinger, like left or right. He played Oakmont, and he was like, he called me right. He's like, dude, I played out of my ass. He was like, I scrambled a seventy eight. He was like, it was the greatest day good, of my yeah. life. Yeah, that's what he had a yeah. But if you can't putt. Mm. Oh, my, my, if you can't do you. anything dude you can't <laughs> yeah. hit it straight the rough sucks the greens are impossible yeah. like the whole it's just and it's they fun. keep it really re- that's the cool thing is like from what i'm told i've only played it once but they keep it like tournament condition virtually the entire Which time they're sick. open so you get like the real look yeah. like they, they say they can like host us open on a week notice that's crazy the place that i played where i really got my lunch eaten in, in terms of putting was olympic club mm. Ever played it? Got to be a good player to win around Ever there. played that? That's a little slap dick course. <laughs> <laughs> Cole, I'll say it so you don't. We're going to get a self slap yeah, charge. So sick. you don't have to do it. I'll do it for you because I'm a good partner. Colt won the Osam there. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. yeah. This is hard. And though. then they were oh. talking about tearing it up and redoing yeah, it. Totally they were like, this place is a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. That place was bad. I think it's a, that course is so fun, dude. Oh, and I, we had a cat. This this is where I knew I was in for it. I was like, the, the cat that we had was this guy. I want to say his name was Manny, but I don't hold me to it. He'd been there like 40 years. And he's like, I've been here 40 years. I still don't know how every putt in this corporate. Like, wow. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, he's like, the just oh. all this stuff that gets in there. He's like, if you don't hit the right speed on the right line, he's like, the grain. He's like, it's just going to eat you alive. And I checked the scorecard. I was like, yeah, holy shit. They kicked my teeth in. Out here. And it's short. Like, and you look at it and it's 69, yeah, 75. But, yeah. but San it, Fran, it's San Fran and ball goes zero. I, I figured San that's Fran the yet. city you would have said just because there's so much good golf. And that's they're all a, close. Yeah, that's a that's another good one. I mean, where else do you play up there? Um, We played Olympic Club. We played Cal Club. Cal, Cal Club is the sickest. Sick, yeah. I love Cal Club. Presidio is like a small, like little spot, like that that was the first time i played golf in san francisco we couldn't we didn't have anyone that could swing like one of the big ones yet so we went and played presidio and that's like a cool like little like funky track that you're like all right you got to play like you gotta be solid out there so there i mean we have so many guys that have connections that have played around so like we kind of piece it together throughout the year so it's like there's there's some solid spots we've gotten to play when you go out and you bring your sticks and i'm assuming there's other pitchers on the staff that go out and play with you or somebody you ain't going out by yourself what are the other play? what do the field players think are these like these fucking guys yeah they work one every five <laughs> yep. days they get to play golf like they're the biggest pansies yeah they, they're like oh how was golf today like oh i can't imagine yeah, they're, they're, they're like, stretching and fucking exactly. lifting they're like i'm on game 140 of 141 <laughs> and you're like and i'm like yeah sorry man you should have been a pitcher sorry you should have been yeah, yeah. I, when i was a kid i had like i had no idea all my brothers because i played both when i was a kid like all the way until college they were like that was it like no more playing the field and my brother's friends were like you want to be a pitcher i'm like why it's boring you play one every five days and they're like you're gonna get to a point in your career hopefully where you go thanks for telling me to be a pitcher yeah, and now paid a lot you yeah get paid the most. one out of five days play some golf you play golf you get all like, the glory yeah so like it's no it's it's sick what do you think as a player when you see like what the dodgers are doing right now i know you hate the dodgers but like Shohei Otani, they're signing all these guys. They're basically trying to buy a World Series. Bunch, yeah. But Shohei, seven hundred million dollars. I mean, what yeah. are we doing? That I, I'll tell you this. I wasn't shocked about Shohei signing the Dodgers at all. Like, to me, I didn't see him leaving our division. It was either he was going to go there, or like I had the Giants as being a dark horse. Like, so I'm like, I'm, I was prepared to face Shohei. How many ever times we play them? Thirteen. So it's like I was prepared to face him fifty times. Like you get four bats a game. So 
yeah i what the number is what shocked me oh. was like i mean dude like seven holy shit I was like, and they're like, deferring on like almost all of it right Isn't yeah 680 he, of it it's nice when you make whatever he makes off the field in that's a year. the thing. He need it but you can, you can afford nice to do him. that yeah it's like i uh, i mean i respect it like he wants a win he wants good players around him so like you have to sacrifice some of those things. It's like, but I think he'll be all right with his off the field money. Oh so is like, he the guy, if there's one dude that you just dread facing, like, fuck, like yeah, I don't, fear might not be the right word, but you're like, damn, this could be like, yeah, he's, this is tough. He's up there. He's there's, there's certain guys for sure that you have to like, I'll change my scouting approach a little bit. Just like just certain ways that I've avenues. I got to be able to disguise pitches or set up, you know, different, parts of the at bat but like yeah he's one of those guys is up there that lineup's tough i mean mookie's tough freddie's tough like it, it's that lineup's gonna be a challenge for sure but i mean that's what you want it's like you want to see how you stack up against those guys so yeah i mean he's he's a tough he's a tough at bat for sure set a nice market for pitchers too granted he does other things but like hey he's 700 you know what I mean? What does yeah. that make a fellow like me? I can't hit 40 You got to root for those yeah. contracts. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah. He, as I said, he does a little something other than pitch too, but yeah, he's, he pitches. He's a freak, man. How, a, how with Trout and him, like, were the Angels never better? I just, that just blows my mind. I, I don't know because, like, they, it wasn't like they didn't spend money either. Yeah. It's like they were trying to bring guys in. It's just like, I, I really don't know. It's I, wild it, to me. Is yeah. It a culture thing? I don't, I really don't, because I, I, I don't really know. Like, I've had a couple guys play over there, but, like, they were, like, the culture's great. Like, they're, like, Otani's great, Trout's great. Like, all those guys are awesome. It's just, like, I mean, you got to worry about them. And they're playing in the AL West, so it's, like, they got to worry about the Astros every year. So, it's, like, it, I mean, they're not playing in a soft division. Not that any division's soft, but it's, like, yeah, I, I think it's going to go down as one of the biggest mysteries in, it's like, crazy. sports. Like, they didn't even play, and you, did they, they didn't play a playoff game. They, not, Otani never played, Trout's played in one one or two one playoff pressure. games. Yeah, Otani's yeah. never played a playoff game. Yeah. God damn. Nice short season. Gets paid a Grizz. Smart dude. Yeah. Smartest dude. Yeah. Fucking, I love that's the way you look smartest at Smartest dude yeah, in short business. Season. Yeah, dude. He gets more time <laughs> off and makes more money. Tell me who's the dumb dumb. Um, you're a New Jersey guy, so is Trout. Did you guys ever, did you bump heads like coming up? No. Well, we actually played for the same travel team. Trout's a couple years older than me, but yeah, we, so Trout was like the guy when we were kids. So he's like, you heard about him from, is he like one of those kids like you heard about a kid from whatever town yep. he's from? Like, yeah. So truth. his, um, our travel, our the guy who ran our travel program, it was his father who started it, and then the son was our coach, and then Trout's coach. So he would do travels on the seventeens, I think, when we were twelve. So we were the first like little league team he coached, and we remember hearing about it. They're like, yeah, this kid Trout's gonna go in the first round. And, like, you kind of hear about him, but you're like not really sure because at twelve, you're like you yeah. know what but like yeah we'd heard about him he'd be in the facility like working out and like then you start to hear these stories and like the first time i started to put it together he was like i'm going to, to trout's draft party tonight or he was up in the mlb office and we're like huh and he's like he's gonna be a first rounder like yeah and it was it's cool and then he wound up coming back when it was what my senior year we did like a signing day like thing or whatever and they retired his number he just won the rookie of the year the mvp i forget exactly what it was so he came back so Got to talk to him a little bit, but I haven't I haven't crossed paths with him since. Like, so I'm looking forward to like chopping it up with him and kind of like yeah, because got talking about like you know guys that like we grew up playing for and like just the area and stuff like that. Yeah, I saw you are both from New Jersey. Actually, I'm good buddies with Justin Upton who mm -hmm. played at the Angels, and so they were on a road trip there in Minnesota the same time we were for 3M. He's like, hey, come out and have drinks with Trout. And I Trout's heard he's not playing. I'm not playing. Yeah. So I didn't know what to expect. Like, I mean, this is a superstar. I don't know. He was so cool. We had so much fun. He loves golf. It was I was blown away by how like just he's just a normal dude that happens to be really freaking good at baseball. Yeah, he's just it sounds like very super down to earth guy. Like uh, I mean, it's just yeah, you, you hear nothing but good things. I and mean, he's designing a course right now with Tiger up up in New Jersey. He's got his own course. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, he apparently is a good golfer. Like he's a I played with. I've seen the Top Golf okay. video of him sending it is, to the O's. Have you played? Yeah. Have you played Silverleaf? Yeah. Okay, so the tenth hole. We're out there playing me, him, and up. The 10th hole is the hard one up the hill yeah. towards the deal. And he's like, what do I do here? And I was like, I'll just hit like a two iron down there short of it because, I mean, he smashes it. Yeah. And so we get up there. He's like, why didn't I just hit driver over the the ditch? And I was like, well, I've yeah. never played with a yeah. dude that can carry it 360. I like, I, yeah. I've never, Why are you handcuffing me? He's like, yeah. bum ass. Shit, man. I didn't know like that was even possible. Yeah, next time I'm just going to say hit it on the green. Dude, his speed is absurd. 
That Top Golf video went like crazy viral. It was him yeah. like smack. And by the way, you can't hit it hard with those clubs. Yeah, that's yeah. And those balls, like, like dumb down balls. Yeah. Proper like, equipment, a ball. It's like, a piece of shit. Both I mean, of them. He can hit it crooked, obviously, but when he catches it, my god, it is stupid. He's a yeah. thick dude. I mean, he freak. I mean, talk about freak athletes, like freak athlete, like. And you it, sometimes you feel like the hitters, like, I think that's even more impressive because like. To be able to grind on your golf swing, but then also worry about your baseball swing too. Like we have a lot of guys that are like, eh, I don't, I don't play during the season because like yeah. hitters specifically, that you know they're like, I just don't want to mess with my swing. Like, it's like just, totally opposite, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know all the mechanics of the baseball swing, but from what I hear, they're like, no, it's not good for my baseball. It's not good for my swing. Yeah, I've only played with a handful of guys, maybe even one. Carson Kelly, who was our catcher here the last five six years. He's a really good golfer. He probably plays like a plus one. And he's oh, about huh. the only position player that would like, was like legit and would like play like during this, like during the season. Like, but yeah, a lot of guys tend to just go, ah, I'll play in the off season. Yeah. It makes sense for them. I mean, it's your life. You might as well, yeah, you might well do that. Yeah. Pitchers go play all the time. Exactly. It's like, we're going to take a brief break from this week's interview to remind everyone about our YouTube channel. If you are listening to the audio only, make sure to go to at Golf Subpar on YouTube and check it out. If you are watching and enjoying the show, make sure you do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and making sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Oh, and leave us some comments or questions to let us know what you think of the show. We'll do our best to answer them all. Thanks again for listening. Now back to this week's interview. I want to talk a little bit about, because we some of our best stories on here, guys, we call it Jicky Jacks, which is like for mini tours and stuff, mm -hmm. the minor leagues. You played in the minor leagues. You played for one of the greatest teams, New Orleans Baby Cakes. The Unbelievable baby name. Cakes, dude. Which we're gonna you get should some... have never left. I yeah, mean, you did a good job for yourself, but that's a sick franchise. We're going to get into some minor league it's names. My new early, favorite franchise. But New Orleans Baby Cakes is incredible. Give us, you got any good minor league stories? Um, Well, I t I've been telling this story a lot lately because people, I don't know why, but people have been like, you played for the Baby Cakes? So cool. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I did. I was there. I spent begrudgingly w too long there i wish i was not there very long like because you're triple a you're like i just want to get to the big leagues but we had this guy and i was never there but i heard about it. so there was this in the in the big leagues all your gear travels with you like they put it right on the plane gets there in the minor leagues they have to ship it like in truck so like the truck would come pick it up and then take it to whatever city you were going to so they had this i think fedex would deliver our stuff and this fedex guy it was like on schedule every time you come pick up he'd be like baby cakes sounds like a softball team and like the clubbies would be like dude you told the same joke two weeks ago and they said the guy like every time we would come in be like yeah oh softball team and he's like and the guys were like they would just get so tired of it and i heard about it i'm like yeah that's tough but baby like cakes. i think it's yeah. the sickest name in the world so how long i don't care if it's softball or anything yeah how it long, is a good name yeah. yeah how long did you have to live in how long were you in new orleans so i was there all of 18 and then I was I got called up in June of 2019, so like, you know, good how many ever months? Is that? Yeah. eight months out of the total of two years. New Orleans. Yeah, all right. Like, I feel like you either love New Orleans or you hate New Orleans. I wasn't the biggest fan. Like, I mean, it's I mean, dirty. It is sun. The sun is hot. Like the summers are like you oh, bake out there. So There's humid. nowhere hotter in the world than that swamp. There that or swamp heat. Ooh, Little Rock, Arkansas is another place I've played. Has been like so hot. The Travelers. Yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> They got that like river or lake or whatever out in right field. And it's like, it almost like the humidity just comes right off of that and just sticks right on the field. And it's like, yeah, that place is hot. New Orleans, the good thing about New Orleans being hot is like, you don't have to warm up. Like as soon as you go outside, you're like, all right, I'm good to go. Yeah. Like five minutes, sauna. run around for a little bit. Yeah, you're good to go. But all right, so June, 2019, did you have any idea the call was coming that you were going to get called up to the big leagues? What was that moment like when you finally achieved that dream? Yeah, I was... I was having a good year in, in 19, like got off to a really good start and was like first month of the year. I'm like, all right, it's got to be coming soon. And we had a meeting. I remember in, I think it was El Paso and the oh, great place. Yeah. It's a, it's a luxurious <laughs> lifestyle. That yeah. AAA. It's, it's actually, sorry. We it's were so in, much like the mini tours, dude. Yeah. 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 That's like, that's why when I hear about guys playing the mini tours, like I'm very like, like i i can feel like i have sympathy for those guys i'm like it's a grind like it for like for sure it's a grind so we were in actually we were in san antonio manager comes in after the game and we just won so it was weird to have like a, a team meeting where he's like all right team meeting he's like we got somebody going up to the big leagues and i was like finally man this is like i'm going to the big leagues they call up another guy and everyone like kind of looked at me and they were like huh and they're like i mean they're like how and after the fact they're like how is that not you i was like 
I, I don't know. I guess they, you know, there's all kinds of different stuff. Was it stuff. a pitcher? Yeah, it was another pitcher. Oh, oh wow. shit. Yeah, so it was like, there's stuff that goes with the 40-man roster and just kind of logistic stuff that, like, you know, you, you come to find out the business side of it. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I started getting calls from, like, my agents. They're like, don't do anything different. Like, when guys, like, are having a good year and they get passed over, like, guys want to start to change something and feel like, oh, I need to strike more guys out or I need to start throwing hard or whatever. They started calling. They were like, it was almost like every other day. They're like, don't do anything different. Like, you're good. Just stay where you're at. Just just try and stay healthy. I'm like, all right, sounds good. So come the, the week before I got called up, we were in El Paso. And I get word that another guy gets called up in front of me. And I'm like, at this point, I don't know what else to do. Like, do I need to get traded? Do I need, like, I don't know how it works. So I was I was pretty bitter about it. Um, and I had, <laughs> some people probably still have the screenshot, but I, I made a tweet about like, I didn't say anything. All I just said was just LOL. Because like at that point, I was pretty displeased about it. So like, to all the kids out there, do not, <laughs> do not like <laughs> don't tweet. tweet when you're emotional. Tweet, yeah, when you're emotional. But like, it was still very cryptic because people were like, I was like, oh, it was about the airplane or whatever. But like, I was, I was pretty <laughs> fired up that I didn't get called up and the now the coaches start coming to me and they're like hey we just want to make sure like you're all right with the organization like we we see we see what we're doing like just it was logistics i kind of called bullshit on it but um i made a start in el paso like two days later we go to albuquerque new mexico and i'm on the plane and this was cool because i kind of i wanted it by surprise like i didn't want it to be like oh like now it's my time and they that that was really cool because i was on the plane I was watching this movie, I think it's called Snatched or Snatched, like whatever. And the manager comes up, Keith Johnson, he comes, taps me on the shoulder. And I have my headphones in. And he's like, uh, he says, uh, when you get off the plane, you're going to be a big leaguer. So I take my headphones out. I'm like, what did you say you saw the movie before? Like, I thought he, like, I had no idea what he said. He's like, when you get off this plane, you're going to go home. You're going to pack your bags. You're going to St. Louis tomorrow. I was like, what? So I sat there for a whole hour, no service, like couldn't tell my oh family, my just like sat on it. And like, it's like a late night flight. And like my teammates are starting to kind of figure out what's going on. And they're like, look at me, like give me thumbs up. And like, yes, yeah, so I sat there for an hour and then I got off the plane and all the guys were there and like kind of like give me hugs and like dap me up. And, and it was cool. Got home, called my family at like two in the morning. And I was like, I'm going to the big leagues. I have a flight at like 6 a.m. tomorrow. And like, they were all like, I didn't sleep. I know my mom didn't sleep. Like they were all trying to figure out how to get to St. Louis. And like, yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool moment. Like everything that had kind of, that was sour before it, like just made it all worth it. That's yeah. incredible. No Enjoy service, Biloxi, no boys. Yeah. That yeah. is going to the show. Yeah. Was, I was like, oh, finally I get out. I get out of here. Like, let's see what the show's like. I'm, uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather go play the El Paso Chihuahuas again. <laughs> yeah. They probably had a sicker name though. They actually, no, they're Chihuahuas. Are they? I know what they're, they're actually. Yeah. My yeah. wife's from El Paso. <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh, there we go. It's a sick stadium. Their stadium like, is right in downtown. It yeah. actually is nice. It's, it's a badass stadium. They did like, they draw a good crowd. Like it's a cool place to play. It's a bad place to pitch. <laughs> it is a jet stream to center field. It's tiny. Like. I got when I first got called to AAA when I like my first year, they I got my licks in there. I was like, ooh, I don't know about this. This is ball jumps here. Like when you're when you're in AAA and you're like a guy that like is expecting at some point in the near future to get called. Is it like game to game? Like if you get shelled in a game, you're like, oh fuck, that just set me back two months. Yeah, is yeah. it like that much game in game out, or they just see like this kid's gonna be a big leaguer? Let's get him up here. I think yeah, I, I think there can be. I think it depends on like just the body of work. Like if you had two months of just dominating and then you have a bad start, they're like, all right, they they would. What I've heard is they would rather you have a little bit of failure and kind of see how you bounce back from that. Like they're not going to necessarily, you know, oh, he has one bad outing. Like, oh, he's not ready for it. It's like they would rather you have a bad outing and then go on like a string of like three or four more good starts. But if you start to string the bad starts together and like, okay, maybe he needs a little more work. I've like just kind of learned there's certain things that like they want to see usage in like certain pitches. Maybe like if you're like, oh, he needs a third pitch or he needs a fourth pitch. Like, is he using that a lot? Is he getting good success? So like, yes and no. I think it, relievers and starters a little bit different too um but yeah there's there's a lot more stuff that goes into it than just like yeah i didn't know if it was like day to day like you know that like a bad round would say oh, yeah he needs a couple more months yeah. or whatever you it's definitely i think they like to see the failure like the bounce back from failure can you handle it because i mean you're going to get up to the big leagues and you're going to have failure i mean yeah, it's a game of failure so drunk. they want yeah all right it, take us through that you, you get the call you fly to st louis how many days until you you started and what was the first start like yeah, so I got up, um, I want to, I feel like I got called up on Wednesday, got there on Wednesday and just kind of went through all like doing the media stuff, got to play catch and then went home that night, like 
they sent me because you're not allowed to be in the dugout because you're not technically i don't know what the word is authorized or whatever you have to be in the dugout so i went home got a good meal and then got to sleep and like i mean you can't sleep before like i mean yeah. i went to bed at like two in the like i tried as best i could turn the lights off lay in bed and you're just like sitting there kind of answering text messages and like i finally just fell asleep um and then pitched the next day oh, on wow. a thursday and yeah my whole family i had like 30 people come out like which was really cool because like that's not an easy trip from philadelphia like to missouri like to get out there um and yeah i saw all my family before the game um but yeah it, it was it was a blast like and i grew up a cardinals fan i got drafted by the cardinals so to get to play in bush stadium like i was like yeah this it, it was it was awesome how'd the first one go it was solid i think i went like whew, like five and a third five and two thirds gave up like one run two nice, runs yeah. or it was yeah it was and i got to i mean i played with all those guys like the the cardinals guys like coming up in the minor league so it was cool to get to face them and kind of like see those guys and like still be able to share that day with guys that like i grinded with and you know a ball and double a and stuff like that but it was yeah it's um it's cool i mean bush stadium i mean it's a big stadium but it looked 10 times bigger that and day. that's it's a fun like, that's a sweet place to play or watch yeah. baseball yeah it's an underrated stadium. It's one of those places, and I don't know how it's underrated, but every time I go there, I'm like, this is a cool, like I find something new in the stadium, like the backdrop or whatever, like how many, you know, tiers they have there. And it's like, this this place is sick. What's the vibe like from the dudes on the team when like you're the new kid, you get called up, you're the rook. Are they still, is it like the old days? are like, hey, rook, carry my bags and stuff like that. Or they freeze you out in the locker room. Is there any of that? Or do they just like embrace you? Yeah, no, they, I will say, it, I think it differs on, the organization like some guys just have like a super old kind of mentality and they, they kind of do that a little bit i i didn't really get crazy hazing um either either place like miami or um here like tour our manager here is like really wants everyone to feel comfortable and like you don't want to do that like you still have some things where like veterans get a little bit more I don't want to say preferential treatment, but like just things like you've been in the game a while and like you're just, you know, you get certain things or whatever, but like he's very cool about like guys being comfortable. Like you're not, you don't want to make anyone feel like they don't belong. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have to do all like the regular stuff. Like they make you get up on the bus and you got to tell stories or like sing <laughs> and stuff like that. So yeah. like they want to haze you a little bit and like, but it's more about like just bringing you into the team. And, yeah, like, being one of the boys. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, I didn't have anything like that. Um, but like, did you sing? I did. What? I sang Country Roads by John Denver. That's a good, that's Beautiful. a classic. It's good. My Get dad, other people right involved. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. start I, from the top. One, I had that two. earlier today. Somebody was like, what's, what song you sing by heart? And I was like, I could sing Country Roads. I'm pretty sure I could, I could, I could do the whole thing. And, I was like, but don't put me on the spot. Like, I can't. But where yeah. is it on the bus? You got to do it on the bus. Yeah, you get up on the mic on those like coach buses. Oh yeah, and, like yeah. So it just so, sounds like shit no matter what. Exactly. So it was like my thought was like, all right, I need to sing something because I wasn't the. I feel like. I had gotten some like kind of tips from other guys like, all right, listen, you're going to want to sing something that like everyone kind of sing along to. So that way, like as long as you're doing a good job, they'll join in. So like that was my thought. I was like, all right, everyone knows this song. Like I could at least at least the, the, the Southern guys know this. song. Yeah. So that was my thought. So I did it and they said I did a good job, which I was pumped about. Like, yeah, that's a safe song. Yeah, safe song. But the guys who go like way out of their element and do something and kill it, it's like the bus goes or wild. I know they like give you a song like you're going to sing britney spears and you better try hard some do some like if you don't have one like then guys pick them so like to you know any rookies out there like have a song like yeah i've <laughs> i've heard there was a story i heard about a guy who had um he was gonna do the thong song that oh, was his dear song God. shit and that's a tough look yeah and he wore a thong every getaway day <laughs> because he was gonna take his like he like whatever he wore like i don't know pants like whatever and they were somebody said to him like how'd you know you were gonna sing that he's like no nah, i've been wearing this song all year just knowing that like oh so i, I don't know who waiting. it was yeah he's been waiting to sing the song waiting and and the person who was telling me was like said the bus <laughs> erupted said it was like the, one of the best they've ever seen um so like guys like that i respect that i was just like i'm gonna stay in my little lane right here um i know we both love hard knocks and they always have the rookies sing on on hard knocks was aiden hutchinson sang michael jackson I, I believe for the lions and it was like unbelievable <laughs> yeah. like he absolutely crushed it some of the guys guys are terrible yeah but smart choice make picking a song that everybody knows yeah and i had to do it twice i did it with the marlins and that then, was my next you got to keep doing it even though you're not a rook anymore well no so i i did it with the marlins i called up in june i did it like maybe the next trip or whatever it was I'm like all right cool and then i got traded like two months later to arizona 
and I'm still a rookie, like, but mm-hmm. I'm just on a new team. And they're like, you got to sing. And I'm like, all right, I got one in my back pocket already. Like, I, I already rehearsed this I'm one. I'm tweaking my performance yeah, at this point. Like, all right, I was, yeah, so I was I was good on that sense. Smart. Um, yeah. That's one thing, like, for golfers, like, you never know what it feels like to be traded. Yeah. So, like, what's it like when, I mean, I'm guessing you probably didn't know it's coming. All of a sudden, manager comes in, he's like, hey, bud, um, we're shipping you somewhere else. Yeah, both. Uh, I've gotten traded in the off season and I've gotten traded during the season and both are like equally as, as crazy. Cause you're not like, neither did I see the one when I was in St. Louis to Miami, I was actually down in, in Jupiter where the Cardinal spring training was. And we had heard there was a trade that was going to happen. And we, and it was the Marlins and the Cardinals and it was going to be Marcelo Zuna and Sandy Alcantara were like the two pieces that were known. And then we had heard like there's other pieces or whatever. And I remember seeing the TV being like, man, that sucks for everybody's going to get traded. <laughs> not do I get traded two hours later as I touch down into the Charlotte air. I had a connector touch down. I still have my phone, not on like airplane mode and it starts to buzz. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. I look and it's one of the guys from my agency. I'm like, that's not a good sign. So I let it go to voicemail. I listen to it and he's like, Hey, I'm sure you heard the news already. And I'm like, huh? He's like, this is gonna be a good opportunity for you. I get a bunch of text messages. I check Twitter and my name is everywhere. And it's like, you got traded all this stuff. And I'm like, my mom calls me. She's like, did you just get traded? And I was like, I think so. I was like, because the teams don't call you. Like, unless you're like a, a big time guy and it's like, hey, we've been shopping. You're going to trade. Like, yeah. if you're a young guy, minor league guy, like they just That's kinda... how you find out? It's like Twitter or your agent? Yeah. Not even anyone from the club? Nope. You yeah. like, sometimes you'll you'll hear from the team that, that acquired you. They'll call you and say, hey, well, we're really happy to have you. Like, we're excited. All this stuff. Like. But yeah, usually fine from social media. Like, oh no shit. Yeah, That's it's not like, crazy. hey, you got a week. It's like, well, oh, pack your shit. You don't live tomorrow. here anymore. Yeah, and it's like, uh, so that's how it was when I got traded from the Marlins because, like, that was during the year. Like, I pitched the night before, so I come in and they're like, hey, we we want to see you in the office. And our pitching coach had been doing things where, like, he'd go over the start we the night before. So I'm like, all right, we're just gonna do that. And then we start going to the manager's office. I was like this is weird. I'm like, the manager's going to be on the pitching me. Like, that's kind of odd. So I'm sitting there and I started doing math. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, they're sending me down. Like, so I blacked out the first like two minutes of the meeting. I'm like, damn, I'm like, I pitched really well. I'm like, but I guess Pablo is coming back. So like he, you know, they need a spot or whatever. And I was like, maybe I should just tune back in to see what this rest of this meeting is going about. And they're like, so we really appreciate you. Like we're going to, we went ahead and made a move. Like, you know, we went and acquired another player and I was like, wait, hold on. I'm getting traded for like 10 minutes of the meeting. I had no idea where I was going. <laughs> I thought you were going like, down. Yeah. I was like, oh, sick. At least I'm like, well, hopefully I at least go to the big leagues to the team I'm going to. So finally at the end, I'm like, so where am I going? They're like, oh, you're going to Arizona. I'm like, all right, cool. So that was at like 1.30. The media doesn't come in until 2.30. And like, you can't say anything. So like, I was like the first to know in that instance. I called my family, I called my agent. I'm like, hey, I just got traded. Like, what do I do? And they're like, oh yeah, you're, you'll be in contact with the other team. Like the team is the team that traded you is kind of like, all right, you're like their problem now. Like they're going to handle all the logistics, wow, all that type crazy. of stuff. That's a yeah. weird process. It's not how I would have envisioned it going. And no yeah. matter what, I would think, no matter what you say, and you love St. Louis, they gave you your start and all that. As a competitor, like you never forget the teams that trade you and you want to kill them every time you face them. I would, I would imagine a hundred percent, like I, more like, than anything. Yeah. Cause you're just like, all right, like you didn't, what, whatever you didn't see in me, I'm going to yeah. show you now like, look at me. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's for sure. Like, but now I've gotten to a point where like, I, I try to move off. Like I, I always have it in the back of my head, like the chip on my shoulder, but it's like, all right, I'm trying to accomplish something a little bigger now. It's not that small, like whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm I'm a vindictive bastard. So now they shove like, seven yeah. dudes over for you too. Like, nah, yeah, bitch. yeah. Nah. Uh-huh. Like, I was yeah. already there. You made me move. Yeah. So it's I, I I have perspective when it comes. I mean, not many times you guys get traded twice before they turn 24. Yeah, like, that's wild. But yeah, no, I mean, look, and, you're starter for the National League in the All Star game. You start Game One of the World Series. I mean, shit's going pretty good right now. It's it's going solid. Now I I. I I like to think a lot of those things I, I use as, as fire, like just kind of fuel the fire of like, all right, just remember the, the, the negative sides of what happened yeah. and like, don't, you know, don't allow it to happen again. So, yeah, I mean, things are, are going solid, but, but there's still work yeah. left to be done. How wild was this year? Because y'all were not a team that was picked to possibly go to the World Series and y'all shocked everyone, made it there, ended up losing to the Texas Rangers. But still, to make it to the World Series, I mean, I'm guessing at the start of the season, that probably wasn't you know, that much on y'all's mind? Yeah. Maybe it was, maybe it was the players. It, I mean, it, it's, so it's funny. Like every time the season starts, like it starts zero, zero. Like mm-hmm. everyone has that 
like thought of getting to the World Series. And I mean, I will say that we had that thought, but at the same time, like we really tried to assess our culture in the last couple of years. And like, that was something that was like really big for us. It was like, let's get our culture right. We know we have the talent in this room that like we can be successful, but like to, I mean, there's definitely certain teams that go like, yeah, we're circling the World Series. Ours was like, let's just try try and go out and play good baseball and like win baseball games and see what happens. And we got off to a really good start in the first two months of the year. I mean, we were leading the division for like, I don't know how long, maybe a month. And guys were like, all right, they started to have some belief. And then I think kind of the, because we're a younger clubhouse, like we got just maybe ran out of gas a little bit going into the all-star break. And it was like, all right, we need to reassess like what's going on here. What's what's our problem? What's going on? And like, it just didn't seem like we clicked at the right time. Like everything, like whether it was the bullpen, starting pitching, hitting, like it all just kind of slumped at the same time. And we were like, all right, we know how good we can be. We've seen it. Like, let's just buy ourselves enough time to get into the playoffs. And then as soon as we clinched, it was like, all right, we're here. Like we we did, people didn't expect us to go to playoffs anyway. And it was like almost this freeing experience. Like of house like, money. Exactly. It was like, we're playing with house money. And I was like, let's just see what happens, man. Like we're in, like we're in the playoffs now. Like we got a shot to win the world series. That's why baseball, I feel like maybe more so than any other sport compared to golf. It's like, dude, momentum is like, you start getting confidence as a golfer. Like guy might've done nothing all year. And then all of a sudden something clicks and he has a round or then it's another round. That's and you're like, Oh my God, that's a different dude. It's like the same thing. I feel like with baseball, when these teams get going, they start going on these just crazy stretches where they're just not losing. And 100%. it's like, dude, nothing changed except the juice in that locker room. Yeah. I mean, it's it, like, it just, you just start compounding all that stuff. And it's like, and it's sweet. You get the belief of like, no, I could do this. Like, I, I've gotten that guy out in this situation. Like, yeah, we, uh, 100%, we could do this. Like, so, and it's, I mean, people talk about it, it's like the, the playoffs is like, it's just who, like, you got to get hot at the right time. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, you see teams that go in there on paper that are stacked and like, they just tend to struggle at the end, like whether they don't have like the chip on their shoulder or whatever it is, but like we just got hot at the right time. Like everything just clicked. Like our bullpen went absolutely insane at the end of the year. And it was like, as a starter, that makes your job so much easier to be like, all right, I just got to get six innings or seven innings and turn it to the end of like back end of the bullpen. It's like, all right, this is a win. And like our offense is like, we just have to get, instead of being like, all right, we need 10 runs to win that. It's like, we just need four. We need five runs, whatever it is, and just trying to scratch across those runs. And like, yeah, and then guys started to believe like, all right, we could do this. Like we went to Milwaukee and we won, we swept them. I was like, all right, we could do this. And then go to the Dodgers. And it's like, we've played in that environment before. Like we've seen that team. So like, not to say we were like comfortable, but like we knew what to expect. Like in terms of the whole environment, the team, we played them and they kicked our teeth in like the last five times we played them. And guys, it was almost like, we scored in that first inning, the first game, and guys were like, all right, we belong here. Like, we could play. And then it would, you just saw it. Like, guys, like, they just – yeah, it's it's contagious, like, for sure. Yeah, it's That's like so cool to tangible. hear. I want to know because, I mean, listen, game one of the World Series, you're getting the ball. And I'm sure you knew for a couple of days, like, you were getting the ball. What was that night before, like, and then the morning waking up knowing, like, damn, dude, I'm about to be starting pitcher in the World Series. Yeah, it's, it's kind of – the whole playoff thing is weird, like, because you're just – you're on edge mentally the entire time, whether you're not pitching at all. Like you're just watching the game. You're like, Oh shit. I'm on. Like if this ball falls in this homer, like we could lose this game. So like you're, I almost feel like not like I was walking around like a zombie, but I just was like, so like focused on everything. And like, I, I wasn't really letting the external type of stuff affect. And the, the night before, like, I don't really remember because the day, the day before the world series, it's a media day. So you're kind of moving around doing interviews, doing all this stuff. And like, trying to find a time to get your throwing in and get your lift in or whatever it is you're trying to do to get ready for the day the next day so the day before was just kind of like it almost worked out that i had so much going on and like i didn't think about it it didn't hit me honestly that i was pitching the world series until i was on the bus going to the field and we had like a 10 motorcycle kind of cop like whatever whatever they call it Yeah, yeah police escort and i was like holy shit I'm going to pitch in game one of the World Series. Like, I'm like, this is insane. Like, it, it really didn't hit me until, like, four hours before the game. That's and awesome. then, like, which I think is a, is a, I don't know. I was probably, that's probably beneficial. It was like, all right, you're not sitting yeah, there thinking think about great. it all the time. Like, I, I tried to go through my routine and get my, you know, all my scouting and everything done. I was like, do it the same. But at the same time, like, I have a trouble. Like, I kind of have a tendency to kind of not lean into those things. So, like, I challenged myself throughout the playoffs. It was like, lean into this like lean into the playoffs like don't just be like a robot like try and the emotion part of it like you never know if you'll get back so i was like all right i'm gonna try and lean in so i was like trying to allow those emotions to like you know come over me and it was it was a 
awesome experience. Let me ask you a philosophical question because I think this ought to be good. Pitching, especially, <laughs> probably most closely mirrors the feelings of like a golfer, an individual golfer. You're out there by yourself. You got the ball. It's you versus a hitter. Nobody else matters if you do your job, right? And you have, and more than anything, you have tons of time to think. Tons of time in between pitches. Same thing with a golfer. He hits a shot. He's got to walk the whole time. He's just thinking. So when you're going to try to get at your best, game one for, of the World Series, for instance, like what do you do to try to like lock in mentally? Can you can you feel things that you do differently when you're at your best versus when you're not? For sure, I'm I'm very um, meticulous about like how I, how my body feels, like how the ball comes out of my hand. Like I'm, um, like when I hear golfers talk about like how the club feels in their hand, they can tell if things are off. Like I, I assimilate to that. Cause I got, I could feel, and like, it's almost sometimes maybe to a detriment that they're like, you're feeling way too much. Um, so like I can definitely know how that feels. Like I want to feel right. Cause like if I can repeat my delivery and all those things, the ball comes out of my hand the right way, like I can go out there and basically throw the ball wherever I want to. So when you're not feeling that way, like I try to just, you know, resort back to like my process of like, all right, this is my routine of like things I need to do. Like, all right, I need to make sure my warm up routine is this. I did my scouting here and like make sure I go out there and prepared with like the most information I can have. That way it's like, all right, now I'm just going to let my talent kind of take over essentially. So it's like try not to overcrowd your mind with a lot of stuff, but like I'm definitely more cerebral on the cerebral side than like just go out and play so like I, I i battle with that like trying to just play the game but then also like don't forget like what kind of got you here in a sense so yeah I know it's f- interesting because that's the only thing close to golfing yeah. i think yeah like for golf it's like one day you go out you stripe it you gotta do it again the next day and some days you just wake up and you're like god this feels terrible you yeah. ever had times on the mountain just like uh this could be a problem today yeah i like i, I battled this whole year like not feeling right and i don't know if i got i don't know if spoiled is the right word but like the year before i'd went on such a run the last like two months of the year that i felt like incredible like it i could make the fix in a matter of two to three pitches like when i'm playing catch and i'm like all right i know the feeling i had a, a different cue like like a swing cue like a swing mm-hmm. thought i was like all right and i would go to the like our coach had like a whole entire sheet of lists that i would give them like each day i play catch like all right i felt good nothing to write down or i didn't feel great today but like when i thought about this yeah, I got I got that right. So this year I was kind of grinding, like just trying to feel right, but also going out there to just like try and make pitches. So it was like this year was a little bit more hard, like it was harder mentally. Just like all right, I don't feel great, but I still have to go out there and make pitches. Um, and like it, that's kind of where the detriment comes, like because I could throw, I could practice and throw forever, and like your arm, it's not the healthiest thing to do that. So like it's kind of been a learning experience of like all right, learning how to get better even though when you don't feel great and it's like the same thing like when you, like you said you're out there striping and the next day it's like that's where my feel comes in it's like i want to have that f- i want to know the the lane that i'm in and if i can kind of stay in the lane i can make the adjustments easier so it's like yeah it's it i could definitely overcomplicate it for sure that's, that's fascinating. fascinating that's yeah. just like a golfer that dude it's like everyone's great when they everything is when they're clicking on all cylinders Every, any dude can go out there and shoot 62 and you might never heard of him before but it's like that hardly ever happens. Yeah. So what do you shoot when you feel like shit? Can you grind out a 69, 70 yeah. and stay in the mix? Like, it, and that's crazy. I mean, you were, what, third and Cy Young last year? And yeah. you're like, I didn't feel good for most of the year or whatever. That's wild. That's what people would be like, that's a test. I, like, that's probably like when you're at the next level. I, I would say, like, throughout the year, I was like, I don't feel great. And they're like, you just went seven innings, you get one round. What are yeah. you talking about? They're almost like, fuck you. Like, yeah. you're being yeah. an asshole. I'm like, no, I'm serious. Like, I, <laughs> I, and it's probably because I know what it feels like. So, like, I've like kind of just, seen that like and, and what it takes and like all that stuff and like maybe i'm wrong for trying to de- desire and get that feel again because like a lot of guys aren't not feel like they're not feel oriented so it's like ah maybe i i don't know so like yeah i'm kind of like it, it's i don't know i'm not i'm not spitting in the face of the baseball guys yeah. and being like no i wasn't I, but it was like no i know what it feels like i know where it's at yeah. and i'm like i'm grinding to get back to that because that's what i know is like the next step if i can harness that and be able to do it 34 times a year it's like all right we're on to something here look what i mean look what hideki just did sunday at riviera he got done and i know there was a translator involved so it could have been a little mixed up but amanda asked him like how did it feel like we're using the zone he's like i felt like i hit it like i shot three over I'm yeah. like, you just shot 62, dude. Yeah. <laughs> what do you yeah, it's like, how do you? You, you were one shot love, the record. I would yeah. love to feel like that on the yeah. golf course. Like, I felt oh, terrible and shot 62. I would love to be able to say, yeah, I feel like I shot like three over. Yeah. Like, 
You shot a 93. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's awesome stuff, man. I that love was that. fascinating. Yeah. I like that. Um, let's get to the E9. Yeah, let's do it. Have E9, some fun here. nine, whatever, goofy questions that all we right. got for you okay. all over the map. We mixed this up, the first question we asked everybody. Since you're, you're a young fellow, we're going to ask this. Who's your celebrity crush? My celebrity crush? Um, oh, mm. my girlfriend asks me this all the time, and I'm like, I, I don't. When I was a, when I was a kid, it was Selena Gomez. Now I think I'm on the Ana de Armas train. Oh, Ana de Armas. Who is that? Is that a singer? No, she's a she's in she was in like Knives Out. Did you see that movie? I'm gonna or look this up right now. Google her, her quickly. We normally have computers out here. Yeah. Now we have a new set, and in order to put a new computer, set, that we, you just in case set. someone lists the smells her last can, name. De Armas. De Armas. Yeah. She was oh, in nine. Let me see the spelling on this fucking thing. A R M A S, I think. Show me this when you see it. We're old. This is this is a sign that we're washed and old. You'll know another her. sign. She was in a movie with Ben Affleck too, I think. Yeah. I Selena as a as a youngster when I was a kid, like and my you, family. Would get, yeah, yeah, my family would give me shit. They're like, "Oh, there's Selena. She's like when she started dating Justin Bieber." Yeah, like, yeah. Can you compete with that? I was like, "No, I can't." I mean, it's just can't Bieber. now. Yeah, I'm gonna Selena, have to look this up later. I can't check find those it DMs yet. after we <laughs> drop this <laughs> thing. I think Selena <laughs> listens to this bitch. No, That's yeah. All. So yeah, I don't. I don't sorry, really like your girlfriend. We're not yeah, no, to, we're not trying to break it. up. Sorry, honey, but yeah, I but it's uh, Selena. Yeah, I was. I don't really have one. Like, she's like, who? I'm like, I don't. I don't know. Like, I kind of just. So that's been my like default answer. That's my my go to. Did you find her? No, I will uh, work on it. Yeah, we need a computer. Busy. I'll get, I can't spell. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, yeah, that was that was. <laughs> when by you, the way, the was, pronunciation wasn't the greatest. The Armis. Either. Ana the Armis. De Armis. It's big it's this, D little it's, E. It's the South Jersey. Let me see. A R M I S. Yeah. Big yep. A. Yeah. R M I S. Say that again. R no. D. Ana D E. Yeah. And then A R M A S. I think it is. De Armis. Oh uh, yeah. It's my A's. Mm. They're bad. This looks more. Believable. You think you've got a lot yeah. in on it? The first one, I was like, mm. some like fifty-four-year-old lady from. <laughs> oh, is it this oh lady? dude, look at this. Is a look at our new oh, founder. Oh, there she goes. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Oh, you got a tight dog. Go. Oh, yeah. You got, you got, as, you got I, as I was saying, I was like, maybe I. But yeah. you want to hang out sometime? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for that, uh, Mark. I don't know who this is, but she's now in the list. Yeah. I love this new screen. This we can is, do this. this is, I didn't know you guys had a screen. We shout out producer Mark real quick for the quickness on that. I feel like Brogan right now. Hey. Well, the clip. God, we need to get right. Wyndham in here and have all his ex girlfriends up there at one oh, time. Fuck, <laughs> Great. Dude. We don't have the bandwidth for that. We don't have the internet. We got the shittiest internet. Awesome. All, all right. right, good call on that. All right, uh, celebrity crush. All right, here's my next one as a UNC guy. During your time at UNC, or you can do all time. You can do lifetime too if you want. We can do both. All right. The Duke basketball player you hated, who like the hated Duke guy. Who was it? Um, when I was there, well. It's, What's crazy is my fandom kind of, I wouldn't say dissipated as I got to UNC, but like, I wasn't like into the rivalry as much. And like, I don't know if people know this, like the Duke UNC rivalry is like pretty much basketball only. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit for football and, and baseball, but like more so as a whole university, it's state, like it's NC state. Like that's our rival in just about every other sport. When I was a kid, it was JJ Redick. Like, uh, like that's. When I was there, I think Austin Rivers was maybe there the year before I was there. Mm. So like that mm -hmm. was probably the he's, guy. As a, he's, that was popular. Yeah. yeah, that was that was the guy. Um, Everyone hates then, JJ Redick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, North fucking, Carolina I guy. love JJ. He was my TV, favorite of all time, and now I think he's. I like him even more. Yeah, I think he's sick on TV. He yeah. loves golf, but by it's the just way. so funny that every North Carolina like I hate JJ yeah. Redick. Dude, he was yeah. the first dude. Like he was doing Steph ish type stuff yeah. before Steph. He was shooting from plays. Him and. Um, um uh the dude Grayson. from byu uh oh, oh jimmer jimmer, jimmer, jimmer yeah. for that yeah dude they were shooting from places around the same time too that i was, I was like what are we this is video game shit it, he was he's so good that's why so you hate nice. him that's why like that's why people don't like leitner because he was so good yeah, you don't hate like, the shitty guys you love them like, like we don't know who that guy, guy is yeah. who cares and then grace now was another guy that oh there. he yeah. might yeah he's yeah. just easy and now he's a phoenix guy. he's a phoenix you got, guy. you'll probably run so into him I, I yeah i won't but we won't tell him when he comes on he's coming on next sick no i'm kidding you could tell him he came after a tar yeah, hair. He came. Zach <laughs> Gallon fucking hates you. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I don't know. All right, All right next one. Um, I've heard before each start, your routine is rather detailed. Give me a little idea of what your routine is like leading into a start. Did you actually hear this? Yeah. Who's your source? 
Should I say? They're everywhere, dude. I'm curious who we your got sources. Ears. We got boots in this town. Only because I'm I'm curious, because some people might know how detailed it is. Some people are like, oh, he's just very meticulous. Okay, well, this sounds bad because I don't know if he's still a part of the team, but Mark Reed. All right, yeah. So, yeah, Reed would know for sure. Yeah. He would, yeah. I Sorry, Mark. Golf, nah, I love you. Reader's awesome. I play golf with Reader. Yeah. Um, Putts told me a little about it, too. Yeah, so, all right. So, my the routine is kind of evolved over the years but i'll get to the field let's say we played 640 our home games here i try and get to the field four hours before as soon as i get to the field i shower i trim my beard because you're playing on tv you gotta like your gotta beard's look, gotta be gotta lined up proper i uh wash my hair shampoo make sure it looks right and people are like this guy what's wrong with this guy <laughs> what a vain bastard. but trust me i had a in 21 after covid we all just said we're gonna grow our hair out and i saw pictures of my hair and i was like what the f- what was i doing out there like someone didn't stop me so now i'm like wash my hair make sure i look presentable on national television when i'm playing on tv i do that um then i'll go in I'll get my scouting done. I'll finish the rest of the scouting. I'll sit in the in the food room. I ninety five percent of the time I sit in the same seat. I'll eat, um, finish my scouting about same uh, meal. No, I well, it started to gravitate towards um, the people that we have cooked for us, cooking on wood. They're awesome. The guy Franco, he's he knows I love his burritos, so he's like, "You want burrito?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, I'll eat a burrito." But like, I tend to not ask him all the time. So I'm like, I feel bad. I'm like, I'll eat just whatever's out here. So he makes a burrito. I usually eat the burrito, um, and then I'll probably finish. So 6.40, I get out on the field at 6 o'clock. I need an hour to, like, warm up. So, like, I try to start my warm-up process at about 5 o'clock, and then I'll go through, like, whatever my different warm-ups are, like get my arm ready, get my legs ready, um, make sure I have the scouting stuff, send it to our guy. I can put it on the iPad that I have it, um, and then just go out and start playing catch. I'll play catch from – six to six fifteen six ten six fifteen go out and get on the mound and then try and walk in by like six thirty six thirty five so yeah it's it's the i will say I, this year i was like damn i was like the showering and, sh- and trimming my beard is like just getting like it's getting monotonous <laughs> i was like i need to figure it out but like it just started to become part of my routine and i try not to like i want my warm up process and my routine to be so streamlined i want no like um superstitions like I, yeah. I, I i was so superstitious as a kid like like oh i pitched well like i put my right sock on right and it's like that just clouds me mentally and i'd rather just be like i know what i'm gonna do and this is like i wear the same i wear it the shirt i wear when i don't pitch four out of five days a week and then i have a different shirt this is probably about the only superstitious thing i do is that i wear this gray like nike shirt when i pitch like so that's yeah, it's. I love to trim the beard before every start. You yeah, have someone do it, or do you do it? I do it. Yeah, okay. I do it. Yeah, but, but it's funny. Like I'm gonna get into some more superstition things. But like athletes, we had Dan Marley on, mm-hmm. and I played golf with him. And I was like, dude, this fucking guy sucks inside out. Then he comes in here, and I'm like, this guy sucks. His left socks inside out. This is just so weird to me. And I was like, Dan, did you know your socks inside? He's like, oh yeah, I've been doing it for like 25 years. He goes, had a blister one time. Trainer told me to turn my sock inside out, a little more cushion, scored like 40, done it ever since. So he does it in everyday life now. Still, uh, he plays golf. golf. That's, yeah. His socks yeah. inside out. He only wears the same socks. It's all yep. the Jordan socks, like the little low ones that just cover the ankle with the Jordan on it. One's inside out and one's not. And he does it every single day. Yep. All he does is play golf. That's routine. I'm, that, that's awesome. I, that's out of super, so that's a routine thing. It's like, this is what you got to do. I respect that. I mean, that's crazy. That's cool. yeah, yeah. He like snuck in while he was sleeping and put it on right side <laughs> up. He would lose his shit. <laughs> yeah you wouldn't be able to break a hunter the next that's time. true yeah if you yeah. if you can't function with it like i i do i will like go on the superstitious thing like there's certain things that i'll notice that i'll do like two starts in a row and i'll i'll pitch good and i'll find myself going all right well, i wore those cleats last time i pitched well but i really want to wear these cleats and i'm like no no i gotta wear the cleats i don't like that i'm not gravitating to. i need to break the superstition yeah it's like like I wore, a, I wore a snakeskin belt this year with our like Serpientes uniform, and I was like, man, I really need to pitch well with these things. If I get shelled, I'm it's gonna look like shit. And it was like, <laughs> thankfully it worked. And then I was like, all right, now I need, I don't want to pitch like shit, but I was like, I need, I need one that's like doesn't go like great. It's like, all right, good. Now I could just disassociate Wipe with the it. whole thing. And like, all right, now I just, it's yeah, it's it's as a baseball player, you get super serious. So I try to break any of those I can. Yeah, because as soon as it. Like if you're in a situation where you don't have it, it's like you're mentally done. Yeah. They suck actually. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, I used to have a golf ball thing and I was like, dude, I don't have fours. It's over. Yeah. Can't it's play a, good with threes. 
Yeah, I hated it. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, I wear it like I do wear the same like undershirt, like stuff like that. But that's like a and I will freak if I don't have it. But I could pitch without it. It just like I would just rather I have it. But yeah, right. it's well, while we're on this, let me just go to the the next one because I'm fascinated by this. Give me one of your teammates or just someone you've heard about the craziest superstition they have. Um. Oh man, the craziest. Baseball dudes are the most too. Guys are yeah. I mean, I had a teammate in college that like pitched well, and I forget what the meal was like chicken and rice or chipotle or something like that. Or no, you know what it was? It, he did eat. He he ate the same meal, but I could I could say that's like a routine thing. Guys like to eat the same meal just because like mentally you digest it well, whatever it is. But this guy pitched well and had left a spoon up on the counter like from whatever he was eating on right, cereal whatever and just left it and shoved that night and then every night since that he pitched he left it like the night before out on the thing so i was like that's a little odd like trying to remember that's the spoon is what did it yeah the exactly 100 it's, it's like when you're a kid and they're like oh put your spoon on your pillow to like for snow it's like i'm like i don't know so yeah that's the craziest one that i've heard someone goes flips that up he gets shelled gets so crushed yeah. yeah you don't Lose it's right yeah you'll <laughs> everyone <laughs> Who moved That's my spoon? Awesome. Yeah, who touched my spoon? Yeah. I love the superstitions. Like we had Derek Anderson. I mean, his was unbelievable. Like he would pick everyone up. They'd play the same song same on the songs. way to the stadium. Put, like you said, left sock on first, then right. I mean, this everything. I had that in high school. It was that's that's when I started to be like, all right, I can't do this. Yeah, well, like you'll be OCD. Like you, you uh, flip the light switch three times before oh, you can freak leave out. a room, dude. Exactly. You, what, you can't exist anymore at some point. No, if you, like, you keep going. You'll talk yourself into playing bad. Too. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I didn't, I didn't like, I, I did it. Like I had the same force. I remember exactly when it was. It was in my junior high school in South Jersey. They have this big, this big tournament called the Diamond Classic. And it's when all like the public schools and private schools, you kind of qualify for the, for the tournament or whatever. And we were going to play the semifinal, I think it was, or the championship, I forget what. It, and the four songs that played before, like they ended at the perfect time as soon as I got on the bus. And I went out and played well, and we won. And I was like, six. Like every time I pitch, I'm going to play it. So I would try and time it up to where when the song was over, I could get out. And it yeah. was like, that's when I was like, and then I didn't do it. I pitched like shit. I was like, oh, that's not right. And then I timed it up, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Like I'd yeah, look myself in the mirror yeah. and be like, I can't. It's just not well going to work. It's hard, hard thing to break. It's too, hard to break. To break yeah. away from that. Um, I'll give you one along those same lines, I guess, before I get into a couple different ones. Give me best prank you've either been a part of or seen in a, like a major league dugout. Oh, um, the gum on the hat is like a, is a standard The one, one from Carolina. You had a good one in Carolina. Who was the dude in the background dancing? I fucking love that Taylor guy. Taylor Sugg. He yeah. was... He was moving, bro. I'll give you some insight into the I back love that of that. Kid. So, yeah, we... Um, we had played South Carolina the year, the a like, couple weeks before, and Utah Jones was a, a freshman infielder that year, and he did. Our coach was getting interviewed. And he did this banana phone thing, which was hilarious. Like the timing of it was awesome. And I don't know if he meant to do it that way, but they got the whole thing. So that kind of went like semi-viral, and our coach was kind of like a straight edge type person. He doesn't like any mess around, but we were throttling South Carolina. So he was like, "All right, whatever, it's cool." So come the couple weeks later, I'm getting interviewed by ESPN. We played Notre Dame and he makes a joke like, all right, all you like guys who are going to do the video bomb, like whatever, make sure you got your best material ready. And the kids were like, oh, that means we're allowed to like, we could do it. Like, all right, cool. So for like four hours, they were deciding what they were going to do behind me. <laughs> My good buddy, JB, who was a sophomore that year, he was in the rotation with me. He's like, hey, let me put a piece of gum on the top of your hat. I'm like, all right, sounds good, whatever. And then sure enough, the three freshmen in the back, Taylor Sugg, Logan Welch, and Utah Jones went nuts. And Taylor Sugg did the whole dancing thing. His hat fell off. He was like a campus celebrity Dude, for like the, the rest of the year. The local news came and they were doing this whole entire thing for like a week. And then at that point, our coach was like, enough. We got to stop. We have to cut yeah, this yeah, out. It's, it's, like it's getting whole... too much of a distraction. So yeah, he was, he back when like he went viral, he gained like, it's so like lame to say, but like, he gained like 2,000 followers like overnight. Like they were letting him into the bars when he was like young. Like, <laughs> dude, he was I, sick. I, I, yeah, maybe they were letting him in the you bars. I don't know. But oh, yeah, I'll show so it to like, you after we get done, dude. This kid's going wild. wild. What's that kid? What's he do now? Is he still playing? I don't think he's still playing. He Damn. was playing. He was he was trying to, but I I haven't seen him since. But yeah, he, he had good stuff too just, as a freshman. Yeah, just it was dealing right behind his. Interview. It's it's good and it it pops up like it was going like every year. I would get like. 
10 notifications people like oh look at this video and i played with teammates that were like i've watched this video so many times and I, they're like i had no idea that was you and I'm like it says my name at the bottom yeah, like, do you yeah not i'm not watching me i'm yeah, the main I'm part like, watching yeah they're Taylor watching the guy in the back there yeah yeah it was good he could dance and people loved it yeah like, his shit was nice yeah it was it was sick. i like that kid like, tell him i said i like him next time i see him, him i'll yeah, yeah, <laughs> let him know sure. tell him i'm a fan all right next one i'm guessing i'm not the only one but when you hear zach gallon you kind of think zach galifianakis a little bit which Incredible show between two ferns. Unbelievable. Okay. If you were going to have your own show, what would it be called? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Next to one fern, maybe? Next no, to one I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, between two fans. You could be fans for fan and dudes. Yeah. Because you fan batters. That would be solid. I actually two like big that. ass fans. I don't know. I mean, if you ask anyone else, it would probably <laughs> something to do with milk. I don't know. Milkman. Yeah, well, yeah. That's yeah. yeah, dude. A couple where, of gallons. Where does the milkman come from? That, so that started when I was at UNC, too. Like, all this comes back to UNC, I guess. I don't know. Um, apparently, there was a guy, this guy, Turner Walson, who did our TV. Sometimes he would fill in on TV. He would do, like, he would be like the color commentator or whatever. And he started calling me the milkman. And, like, I just always assumed it was because my last name was, like, Gallon of Milk. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Yeah, is it not? No, I come, come to find out a couple years after. Like, I was talking, I don't know if my mom or him or whoever it was, they were like, no, he he's saying that because he's like, the milkman always delivers. So he was, it was almost like a good thing. He was like, you pitch in a big spot, like you come up when we need you. And I'm like, all right, solid. So like, cool. Didn't gain any traction until I got here. And then people started, I don't know where they found it out. Like they were, when I was in Miami, they were calling me B-Man because I got stung by a bee one time in a B -Man? game. B-Man? Yeah. And That's I, a shit name. Yeah, that I was name brutal. Fuck man's way cool. It was These awful. idiots aren't creative down It was there. so brutal. I was like, right. they're like, you like B-Man? I'm like that. I got, because I got stung by a bee. Like, all right, cool. Whatever. Everybody's got stung by a bee. Yeah. But it was, I did throw the hardest pitch in my entire career. So like, oh, he's got like, it's like Spider-Man, but B-Man. Uh, I don't okay. know. But then the Milkman thing somehow caught traction here and i was trying to put it off as best i could and then i'd said that casey our you know pr guy i'm like dude if they're gonna call me like let's just lean into it so we did some yeah. stuff with like the arizona milk producers last year and like you can't stop a moving train once that's it good. happens no, so, i like it that's yeah. an endorsement waiting to happen all right yeah. so it's like a double entendre kind of like yeah double meaning gallon of milk and yeah. also you always deliver yeah all right i still think you should have a show someday b-man man is a shit and have zach galifianakis on it i would love between two fans <laughs> that's solid <dog. laughs> yeah, you're always people you, know I mean? yeah, you just, could have big fan, like those, what are those, fans those fans like, that sit on the ground like you know when you don't have ac oh the, i was the saying big, like the box fans I was thinking yeah, like, like big ones at like the golf, like the industrial oh, size like blow band. on the greens. Yeah, and just make it hard like to super uncomfortable. Guests. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> They're but a like, little loud. Yeah, that's a good point. All Should right. scream at each other. We'll work on that. Yeah. That could be the whole show. You just scream and say, what? Yeah, and then the show yeah, ends. Like, you don't yeah. even ask a question. It's 30 seconds long. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, dude. Uh, all right, my next one. I'm a, this. You need to have seen the movie Summer Catch. I'm yep. assuming you have. Okay. Are the house moms in the actual Cape Cod League as as friendly and accommodating as they are in the movie summer That's a good Cash. question uh if so the greatest league of all times yeah so i actually wanted to play in the cape because of that movie you played for that team right i did yeah sick it's sadly enough you find out that the field that they filmed it at is not actually the field that you so i got there and i was like this isn't the field like where, where's the movie field yeah, at where's jessica that, exactly i was like <laughs> there wasn't any jessica beals in the back bullshit then. league but I will say the houses are very much like the houses that you see in the movie. It's like, oh, these people were, they got some money. There's some wealth up here. Um, I, the house moms were, to my knowledge, were not as friendly as the movie. Your house uh, moms, at least. One. My, mine were, yes. they were, they were very, um, sweet ladies. Um, they, they, they bend over backwards for you. That's, that's <laughs> really what made. Sounds like they are. Yeah. Over sounds like they're just like this. <laughs> <laughs> they do that the host families are what make that league go it's the people are are they're awesome the families i mean they open up their house to like you know kids, kids. like college kids and like they come in they love the league i had a i put up there two years i had a blast i met some of my best friends i'll have for the rest of my life i mean the coach just texted me like not too long ago like i still can't stay in contact with them um oh, sick. but to my knowledge no the house moms were not at least to me it's I don't disappointing know, to hear Damn yeah movie. cape cod Moms, if you're listening, you need to yeah. pump <laughs> those numbers up. up. Watch the rookie camp. numbers <laughs> in this racket. I was always like, dude, I should have played baseball, go to Cape Cod League. Jessica Beale runs around. Also, if that doesn't work out, got yeah, crazy moms everywhere. You're sad to find out there's yeah, no target rich environment. No Jessica Beals. The yeah. Sunny Hannah amateur of golf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was different at that You know what I'm thing. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Last one. 
name me like obviously all the hitters have walk up songs. One that when it plays gets you going on the mound. Um. Ooh, I'm trying to think who has good ones. The one I can remember back from college was this outfitter from Miami had trophies by Drake mm. right when it first came out and they had a good sound system so that would bump I think his name was Dale Carey played outfield for them um yeah it was that one's a solid one so when I hear that one it's solid um anything Little Wayne like like I mean right above it is solid like yeah I'm I'm trying to think there's a lot, guys have a lot of good ones but the, the classic like Drake like good ones are usually fire me up I can tell you the sound system at y'all stadium works it sounds like bottle blonde on steroids the it's world. loud. It's so, I mean, I feel, I'm, I'm feel so old. Saying, I'm like, oh my god, this is so loud. That was because so I'll t- we had t- kind of talked to them. They're like, it's kind of like a morgue in here. Like it's a little like it's light, and we're like, can we turn it up? And then we had like got a taste of our own medicine, and it was like getting crackly, and it was like didn't sound good. They're like, you guys want it loud? And we're like, yeah, we kind of made our bed. We got kind of lying in now. I mean, the World Series, like, it was. Crazy. We got a new sound system though, so hopefully it's like sounds clearer. And they don't have to turn it up like insane to hear it. But we had kind of been on the like the I don't I don't know what you call that. Not the front office, but like we were like, let's move the energy in here. We need to get it Gotta going. Have energy. Like, yeah, guys, you know, you could hear that you can't you can hear the people talking in the crowd over your walk up song, which isn't what you want. You want like you want to get fired up. You want a hitter to come up in a big spot and like their walkout song is going crazy. So I used like, to live in Dallas and Elvis Andrus was a good friend. Mm-hmm. And we had this beer pong bet that if I won I got to pick his walk-up song for a week, and he bitched out and wouldn't let me do it after I won. That's what not was good. It? I know. Oh, what I was just gonna, gonna pick do? just random things. I'm a Barbie girl. I, I, I knew you were gonna just say that. Stuff. Stuff. What else? Like, song just one. Just Celine Dion. Thing ever. Yeah. I would never bet that. That's a great bet. That's though. a like, great bet. It's, it's really fun. That's a balls. Whatever you had to put up to counter that is yeah, needs to be substantial. I can't remember. I knew I wasn't gonna lose, so it's fine. That's fair enough. I let you caddy for me for free. Yeah, you can caddy. Yeah, clean my golf balls. Great. But uh, that's good bet. Uh, I've had my walkout for since my so you're a hip hop guy. Yeah, Lil, I've had Lil Wayne. I've had Let the Beat Build since I was a freshman Ooh. in college. So I will not change it. Like, and it's great because like every year, guys are like, oh, what should I do? I need something sick, and I'm like, same one as last year. Just write it down so you know where it's at until so, we play golf, and then we gamble on it. We just I can tell you, we could gamble on just about anything else, and that's probably the one thing Damn. I won't. Just it's, one game. It's, it's an ode to my brother. It's his favorite song, so like it's kind of okay. like a yeah, it's kind of like our thing. So it's okay. Yeah. Well, maybe one of your teammates. We'll get them to bet that with me. That's fine. Yeah, that'll we'll be see fun. We got. Okay. Yeah, we'll pick some. We'll play with Wyndham. We'll let him pick one. Yeah, it'd be soft as shit. All right, my last one. <laughs> this is I'm fascinated by this. Let's say you're not. This is this assumes you're not the starting pitcher at All the right. time. Bench clearing brawl breaks out. Oh, Fucking boy. free for all. What's the protocol as a pitcher? during a bench clearing ball situation like you got to show up for your boys i would think in some capacity but in real life you're like i don't want yeah number one on any so how do you do it do not get hurt yeah that's so, like the one thing like i'm not i'm not talking shit but our you know archie yeah archie bradley archie got He's hurt a during a, a bench clearing brawl this year i'm like what are you what are you doing? He's the type of dude I feel like that wants to get in that. You know what I mean? Like he's not going to be able to sit in the outside. He okay. He didn't even get hurt in the brawl. He got hurt falling over the the railing. <laughs> oh, just get into the Archie, brawl. I love you, but like <laughs> just get into the dude, brawl. Dude, you got to get. You got to at least get there. If you get hurt in the brawl, that's, that's a one tough thing. Look. But when I saw him, I actually saw him on the All Star break, and I was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I got hurt." I'm like, "What do you mean?" So I had to go back and look at it on Twitter, and he's like, "I'm like, Archie, what are you doing?" So number one. Don't get hurt. Like that's that's the one thing. Ultimately, like you're just really trying to break it up. Like that's that's the thing. Like, you got to be out there for your boys, but like don't get hurt, and you got to have your head on a swivel. Like don't get sucker punched. I think mm, it's like yeah. the, find the it's, other pitchers from the other team, and like both of you yeah, pretend to like, like pull uh, each other yeah. off. Like, dude, if it wasn't for you, I'd be b- busting heads. Usually, you get guys that like you'll have guys on your team that know the guy on the other team that's like in the thick of it, and then like they kind of try to separate it. But I've only been in three in my career and funny enough the first two happened i was with the marlins we're playing the d-backs four days before i got traded this guy christian walker wears a pitch on the elbow from this guy Tehran guerrero on a team with like 103 so it was like didn't Ooh. feel good God. yeah we Broken. clear i'm like oh shit this is the first brawl like awesome nothing really happens you kind of just like everyone's you know whatever a little bit of pushing do i get traded four days later 
we're in a bench clearing ball like not a week later i'm like damn the d-backs just scrap all year like, that, <laughs> like all right i guess i mean like the raiders i guess and then yeah and then we had one with the dodgers a couple years ago but like i've never been in one that's been like have you ever gnarly. been you've never been on the mound for one like you hit a dude and it started it no because like i don't i think that hitting would be guys, dicey yeah that's dicey they're not getting away from that they tell you they're like listen like a lot of the infielders like just give us time to get there yeah, like because yeah. like you don't dance wanna, around like, yeah so like but I'm not a huge fan of like hitting guys as retaliation. Like I'd rather just strike you out. Like then I'll put you on base. If you and, like, punch you a dude could... and break your hand, like that's yeah. a problem. I mean, you had Granky. He got hurt a couple years ago. He like broke his collarbone. Like it could only go sideways. Like unless you just land like a haymaker and then you like Nolan rip. Ryan, Robin Ventura, exactly. God. Yeah, just Texas legend. So <laughs> wailing, love it. Just <laughs> fucking. Just come on with us. Oh, yeah. Come on, yeah, let's see come what on, you got. Bring yeah. your bat with you. That's the best part. He just drops his glove. Yeah. Like, come on, let's see what you got. Nolan, and man. then just like almost like your little brother. Like, yeah, dude, it was like a, it was like a right noogie, his... but a punch. Yeah, it's like I got you. It's like yeah. that's country strong right there. Yeah, that's yeah. old man shit. Yeah, it's I like, love it, man. Well, that was a lot. This of This was fucking awesome. Yeah, congrats on a great year. Thank you. Keep it rolling, and let's tee it up soon. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll have you back. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Thanks. Oh yeah. All right, Sleaze, so that was a fun one, man. We've done a lot of interviews. That's up there with one of my favorites. Zach Gallon is an absolute stud, and I'm a fan from right now. Huge fan. I got to meet him, hang out with him a good bit at the Phoenix Open this year. Like, you would never know. Even when I walked out, I didn't know, like, honestly who he was. Like, oh, dude, that's Zach Gallon. Like, he's completely under the radar. Was as nice as they come. Uh, loves golf. Want to come on the show. I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it in person. He's like, right now is a great time, you know, before they get, get cracking in spring training. But, dude, he's about as good a dude as they come he and said dude like three times in six words yeah he's a dude he's a bro <laughs> you know what i mean um and his golf game is awesome like for a golfer nine times or a nine handicap but he i loved hearing about how they still i thought it was kind of like an old school thing where guys would get to play on the road if you're like a maddox a glavin like that level of guy but they still get out on the road. And said ninety five. Being a pitcher in baseball is one of the best gigs in the world. He said ninety five percent of the time he's got the clubs when, when they are on the road. So he loves loves to play. I love that he said he kind of is a fan of Max Homa, but he's a Dodger fan, so that kind of puts him a little bit further down the list. But got to Respect. play some golf with him. He's he's a great dude, man. Had so much and to wear number twenty three at North Carolina. That's a that's a bold play. I know it's baseball, but still, that's a legendary number around Chapel Hill. I thought it would take like permission from mj and i know they got retired in basketball like if you just want to wear carolina blue and 23 like we need to make sure mj's on board but um he's one of the guys that could get it and i cannot wait to get to new orleans to pick me up a new orleans baby cakes hat the minor league baseball teams need to run marketing for every new everyone that, like live should have been like hey you guys come up with some sweet names you know what i mean I agree. There, there's so many good ones so many good ones but hope y'all enjoyed that man that was a lot of fun for us and best of luck to zach and the diamondbacks he's a stud hope they finish second to the rangers again Again, again, I know you're a huge, huge you're such a man. huge Ranger guy. Who's that sec, Who's that shortstop they got? Uh, I used to be Elvis yeah, Andrews. Yeah. I don't know who it is anymore. Yeah, shout out Rangers. Oh, it's uh, Corey. Oh, Corey. Yeah. Good ball player. No, he's a stud. Corey Seager. There you go. Isn't that their shortstop? You could literally name anyone. Makes that $350 million. There player. you go. Also a good game. And he was the MVP. All right. Well, that was it was MVP of the World Series. All right. That was a lot of fun. Um, let's get to some picks this week. You actually took Jake Knapp as a dark horse. How about it? Last week. How about it? How much you make on it? Uh, dude, I don't you don't tax. You don't kiss and tell. Don't know, you tell. know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to the cognizant. Down <laughs> you're all you my love old stomping course. grounds, bud. My, you my deceased body is still there, left side of 11 fairway. Hate this place. Cold shivers every time I watch it. PGA National used to be the Honda, one of the longest tenured sponsorships on the PGA Tour, but now the Cognizant. Um, really good field down there. Roy McIlroy teeing it up. Justin Thomas, among others. Um, as the favorite, I'm going to go guy. He's a little further. 35 to 1. So you get some nice value. After line. Rory, it drops a lot. Yes. But you got a guy that has top 10s the last two times he's teed it up at PGA National. He's my brother from another mother. Mm. Actually, got we got paired with him at the Phoenix Open on Saturday and Sunday. Give me Big Shane Lowry. Big Shane. Okay. Came close. Almost got this thing. Mother Nature kind of jumped up. Bit him he in got the ass. Absolutely host. So bit I think him in the ass. A couple years ago. So shout out Shane Lowry. That'd be a popular one. All right. I'm going a little further down the board as well. I'm going 30 to 1. But I had a guy, sneaky, playing some of the best, most consistent golf on the PJ Tour. Three top 10s and a top 20 in his last five starts. It just seems like he plays well every single week that he's going out there. Caddy is a friend of the program. He's a friend of the program. JT Poston. 
Give me James the postman. Tyree. James Tyree is the official. That's the government name. His first miscut in ages was actually here at the WM Phoenix Open where they missed by a shot. But good news is he bounced back and got himself a top 10 out of the Genesis. Good time to and play with Fleener got to tournament. enjoy himself as he should. And he did. In the festivities. Love yes. JT's game. And it, it's so great talking to Fleener about him. He's like, my guy, he's been caddying for him, I think, three years now. He goes, he's gotten so much better at golf in this offseason. It's, I, mean, I think, I believe he's ninth on the FedEx right now. Yeah, like, he's I, rolling. It's sneaky. Like, no one brings his name up with in terms of, like, who's having a great year this year. But he's just playing good every single week very quietly. All right. My dark horse, I'm going to go with a guy that nobody puts it better than him. He's played well here in the past. I think he missed the cut here last year, which is a little bit of a problem. But you got to hit it in the fairway at PJ National. You got to hoop a lot of par putts because golf course are freaking hard. As shit. And not many do that better than Denny McCarthy, who's going off at 60 to 1. Rolls the rock. His time is coming. We've been saying it for a long time. My dark horse is kind of of the same mold. It's going off at 55 to 1, uh, similar to JT, playing really consistently well this year. Last five events, two top 10s, two top 20s. He's a really straight driver, and he's one of the best iron players in golf. Tom Hoagie, come on down, 55. Oh, you're a frog. Stay, I'm going completely biased. Tom Hoagie. All right, I like it. Mm -hmm. well, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I can't wait to see the Cognizant at PJ National. It's just weird calling it that. I just always want to call it the Honda. But it's a fun golf course to watch because there's a damn train wreck around every corner. It's terrifying. I mean, you can shoot 65 and you can shoot 85 really quickly around there. And also... Best of luck to Anthony Kim this week. Good yes. to see him back. 12 years. Wish you the best of luck, my man. Hope you play really well down there. All right, Sleeves, well, that was a lot of fun. That's going to do it for us. We'll talk to you on next week's Subpar.